Okay. Now it's back? Okay, so it was me. I was interfering with my other computer. Mayor Trufman? Here. Vice Mayor Samaria? Here. Commissioner Joseph Sedalen? Here. Commissioner Kruger? Here. Commissioner Wise? Here. Okay. Uh, look at the stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Republic for one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, I'm going to ask the manager to please. Wow. All comments must be addressed to the leader of the body. I'm sorry, could you excuse me? Yeah, I know. Mr. Ross. Well, I know. I don't know what's going on with it. Hang on. Oh, we'll still so take care of this in a second. Hang on. Mr. Ross, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on. <laughs> Mr. Ross. Okay. Go ahead. Mr. Ross, with all due respect, this is a meeting. <laughs> and if you can't be respectful. Yeah. I, you know, look, video, uh, audio glitch, that's all. Okay. All comments must be addressed to the commission as a body and not individuals. Any person making impertinent or slanderous remarks. If it becomes boisterous while addressing the commission, shall be barred from further audience before the commission by the presiding officer. Unless permission to continue or again address the commission is granted by the majority vote of the commission members present. No clapping, applauding, heckling, or verbal outburst in support or in opposition to a speaker or his or her remarks shall be permitted. No signs of placards shall be allowed in the commission chambers. Please mute or turn off your cell phone or pager at the start of the meeting. Failure to do so may result in being barred from the meeting. Persons exiting the chamber shall do so quietly. Okay, we're going to open the floor for public comments. Where are we supposed to stand? Podium. In any order? In this case, this is not. This is a workshop, so in any order. Go over here for those of you who are in a different location. <laughs> okay. Um, do I need to introduce myself? Is it a formal thing? Okay. Please. Mac Donald Kennedy, 117054, East 11th Court. Um, I have just uh, two quick things that are written on my hand. Um, so, when you're determining a budget for parks and parkways, I would love you to find more money for them. I think one of the things that most people find most appealing and valuable in this community are our green spaces. And um, not only do we have lots of green spaces, but they're throughout the community, and it really is a signature part of what this village is all about. So I'd love you to find more money for Barbara and Parks and Harvard. Um, but I want to talk specifically about an issue on Northeast 11th Place. Uh, when you talk about drainage, I believe it's in the budget already, or I hope it will be, because I know David Raymond has spoken about drainage a couple of times. Northeast 11th Place has a, I'm talking to this thing like the microphone. Northeast 11th Place has a serious issue with drainage, and it's created a public safety issue on 11th Place, as well as a flooding issue. And if you have never driven down 11th in the rain, I would encourage you to come, uh, take a look at what's happening. David Hernandez came and met with uh, Dan and I a couple of weeks ago and looked at the issue with us. We've provided photographs, and we've submitted a lot of documentation about this already. But I will leave these with you guys. These are photos. When it rains on 11th place, for those of you who don't know where we live exactly, we live on the curb. And just north of us on the curb, there are five consecutive properties that have asphalt swales. And when it rains, the water runs off the road like it's supposed to, because the road shaped like this. And then it gets to the swale, the asphalt swale that is impermeable. And the water has nowhere to go because the swales are not sloped properly. The asphalt swales actually create a puddle that runs down the street. So when it rains, you can actually see a moving body of water coming down 11th place. It ends up on a, in a heavy rain, even an average rain, really, but in a heavy rain, most of the street floods. And because the streets are asphalt, you can't tell street from swale. It's all under water. Uh, it's really serious and it's dangerous to drive on. Additionally, we're the low point and uh, the rain all funnels directly down the street into our driveway. So that's what you're going to see here. I'll show you pictures of water 
right when it starts to rain, water running down the street, and then you'll see where it comes into our driveway, and our driveway becomes entirely flooded. So you can see our car sitting in standing water. And this is a view from our porch 45 minutes after the rain stopped, and our entire driveway and front yard is flooded. The water comes all the way up our front sidewalk, up to our front porch. It has never entered our home, but it has come within half an inch down of coming into our home. We replaced our drive. We had, I'm sorry, I'm going to go over time just a second. We had an enormous asphalt driveway when we bought this house. It was huge, way beyond what's allowed for a driveway now. Uh, at our expense, we took out all the asphalt and we restored, I think we measured th over 300 square feet of uh, asphalt was given back to the city and we, we restored the swale. We also put in a permeable surface. So we, I'm sorry? If you could conclude your thoughts. I am. So we replaced the asphalt with a small amount of permeable pavers and most of it is completely permeable gravel. So we have done what we can do to alleviate the situation, and we helped a lot, a whole lot, actually. Um, but the problem remains, and I hope you guys can do something about it. David came over, and I think he's starting to think about some possible solutions, but he certainly acknowledged that the problem existed. So here are the pictures, and I'd like to look at the In addition to the project, in addition to uh, what Matt's talking about with the drainage issue, there's also a safety issue. Uh, there are several uh, duplexes that are right on that curve. Um, there's lots of little kids on the stage and who play there day in, day out, every day they're out there. Uh, you can't tell the difference between where the street edge is and where the uh, uh, swale, which is completely paved over, which doesn't need code, uh, and it's dangerous. Because people, we see people come down the street and start to go into what they perceive as another lane, which is actually the paved swale, which is a couple hundred feet long. Uh, and then there's a tree right in the middle of the swale, paved all the way up to it, and cars swerve to avoid it. Uh, it's extremely dangerous, and I'm just waiting for the day that something will get run over, and I hope to God that never happens. So I hope that you guys will take this seriously and provide some money for that project to fix our street. It's also an aesthetic issue. Uh, it looks terrible. Uh, it looks, just looks horrible. So. To restore that uh, street edge would make a huge improvement, and I think the east side of Biscayne Park has been neglected for far too long, and I think it's time that we invest some money to try and make it uh, up to par with the rest of the village. Thank you. Thank you. Please don't forget to state your name and address. Thank you. Good evening. David Raymond, 11520 Northeast 9th Avenue. Hello, everybody. Um, so, just to continue, and I promise we did not rehearse this prior to the meeting. But, um, so, uh, I don't know, I, I looked online, I saw, and thank you, Commissioner Samaria, for sending the notice on next door, although I was a little confused with that, but, but thank you for sending it out. Um, I didn't see an email from the village on this, or anything either, so I don't know, I'm sure something went out, but hopefully. And then I looked online, and um, I couldn't find any of the pages of the budget or anything, so I don't know if that wasn't available prior to the meeting. Okay, thank you. So I was looking through there, segue into what I wanted to talk about. I was trying to, I wanted to look through there to see if there was um, still money in the budget for drainage issues. In particular, um, I know everyone who's been up here for long enough, as long as we've lived here, have heard about the issue in front of our house on um, 115th, between 115th and 116th and 9th. And we have major flooding there. Um, many of the commissioners here have been out there and talked to me about it. Christian's been dealing with this since he is the public works director. So there was money in the budget last year to replace the drains because these are old well drains, which now they don't even allow. Yay, and all this kind of stuff. So you have stuff going directly into the groundwater from here. They don't go through any kind of French drain or anything. So um, it should be replaced. It was budgeted to be replaced this year. But the budget figure, I think it was 25000 in the budget altogether, and it wasn't enough for, I know it sounds like a big project. I, I do it myself if you guys gave me a shovel and a, and a, a big crane. I would just dig it out myself and not even charge it. But I know that won't happen. So um, I'm just hoping that there's enough money in the budget for that, and also for cleaning the drains, not just our drain, but the drains around the village, because. Um, they do plug up, and you know, with all the rain we've having, and all the things going on with climate change, you know, it really does pay to keep our drain system 
in order. I haven't seen the problem on 11th place, but, um, and that deep, sorry, just There's no drain. 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 So I don't know what you do about that. That's a whole other thing. But I think, you know, just to take the whole issue of climate change and, and rains in this area, I think that's probably our biggest threat. If we ever had a really bad hurricane that sat here for a while, I've seen pictures and I've seen people on canoes and we still have two kayaks in the back, so that's our plan B. So um, thank you for listening on that. And also, again, we didn't rehearse, but Parks and Parkway, the things that, that have been done in front of the rec center here, the butterfly gardens, if there's money to put in the budget to do more beautification things, that would be just such a blessing for everybody. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other public comments? seeing when you're going to have the two budget hearings. First of all, you've never seen a hearing 
first week in August. Normally you keep August in case there is going to be a need for one or two more workshops. You can hear already folks sharing with you, even without seeing a budget, some very crucial concerns. This is the document that's going to drive our whole year and what you can or can't do. Coming after only a week after the second workshop to say you're already ready to have a hearing, and then to have it at 7 o'clock, allowing half an hour, you know you're going to be tempted to rush right through it and say, hey, well, we've got an agenda, and we've got things carried over, and we've got to move on. Not with the budget. They've always been standalone, and they've not happened that early in August. I don't even think they've happened in August at all. One of the things I hope you will allocate, please take a good look at the front page of our website. About as uninviting as you can get, it's basically a big white square with a link to Homestead information and a link to the Rec Center webpage. And other than various buttons around the side, there is nothing to be inviting to people. Interns, how many colleges are around this area? Surely one or more of you could reach out and get interns here. Not with this many states. It's, it's impossible to believe we couldn't get some IT kids coming in here and make us an inviting website that people actually want to go to. Any other public comments? Okay, we'll move on to close public comments. Um, I'm going to turn the meeting over this evening uh, to manager as this is the first meeting and I'd like him to go through this rationale for how they approached everything. So I'm going to turn the meeting over to manager there. Good evening everyone. Um, this is our first budget meeting at this point. It's where we just started to start with last year's budget, taking a look at that. Um, we'll go through where we are recap today and then Paul will assist with that. Um, on 2019 budget, what was spent versus what was projected to be spent. And then we'll look at the first round of our 2020 budget. Um, we're doing this in part because we want to catch everybody up and be as transparent as possible on this so that everyone knows where we are and it's being done here in the public. Um, the 2020 budget, just a, a quick overview. We're trying to keep that at the same level as the 2019 budget. And so we're, we added a few things in there that we'll go through uh, with each part of it. But from that perspective, it's you know it's pretty much the same budget that we had in 2019 as far as the numbers. Um, certain projects will change because some have been completed this year, and some will be carried over. Uh, if we can get them completed by the end of the year, most of the most of the ones that we budget for this year, um, we anticipate having completed. With that, um, we'll go ahead. And Good evening. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to get together in a true workshop environment. Uh, you know, the people are sweet, so if you wanted uh, and, you know, and make this the right setting. Even being in the rec center kind of makes us feel a little bit like we're not at the dais or we're not right there in the normal chambers. And that's really you know, a little bit of my doing. I know there's big criticism of the concept, but uh, the idea is that this is a working uh, opportunity with with your financial situation and, and your 2020 budget. Uh, to, to fill in some of the details that Christian highlighted, the, the idea is to uh, take what we learned last year, which was that driven by fire, uh, and trying to identify you know, what you had as a prior year, which is being created, literally, while we were creating the budget for the next, for this fiscal year. Uh, and I, I researched quite heavily uh, some various techniques and electronic tools to, to see if there was a fancy way to do a budget that would that would be more graphically pleasing and more interesting. And the, the best solution I came up with, and I don't want to ever call Sharon a tool, but I brought with me uh, Sharon Cena, who is the accountant that, that pulled off miracles for you, which we all know about, and I won't make her embarrassed by going into her successes and, and accomplishments. Uh, but I will thank her for, for being here because what Sharon can do is the complexity of your funds in your budget are really hard to, to capture real time when you're talking, uh, when you're answering questions, and when you're making notes to 10, 11 o'clock at night, and then the next morning at 7 to translate them to her. So I, I imposed on her to give up her evening and her day today uh, to accomplish that part of what I told you I would do uh, to make this go better. So that's step one. Step two, uh, you have something different than you had last year. You have intact a full staffing of department heads. 
and that really is the piece that, that, I, that I want to explain to the audience and explain to the commission, which I think you already know, the, of, of the style or the approach and the logic of, of this, these workshops and how I think we're going to get to the finish line in September with a budget you're going to be confident in. And, and you may not like everything in it, you may not agree with everything in it that's expected in this business, but you're going to be confident that it was, it was taken through every process. And that process starts at the bottom, and I don't mean to, just like I try not to offend Sharon, I would never want to offend our fabulous department heads. And that's the thing you have that you didn't have this time last year, is the expertise. You now have, and it used to be a shared expertise. In fact, the audience and the commission knew as much as anybody about some of the topics that went into last year's budget discussion. Well, this year it's different. This year we have the enormous experience of Chief Carrera, and, and Dave, our public works director, and the continued experience of Issa and Ms. Serna, our code enforcement officer. They were not in these positions as they are today. So here's what we did. I went to lunch with Dave and Chief, considering that they had the largest budgets and the most moving parts at it. And you know they're experts in their field when you can't speak at your own lunch that you call, because neither of them let you talk. Uh, they were both in full force telling me how they wanted everything to go and how they wanted it to, to turn out for their department and how great they were working on it. And the truth was, I couldn't talk because they were absolutely right. They were doing great things. The concept of the 2019 budget was evolving right in front of my eyes. And the, the way to handle 2020 budget just popped at me at lunch. And uh, I think Christian paid for lunch, so I was really happy with that. Uh, but but compliments to, to those two gentlemen with, you know, I, I don't want to embarrass their age either. I'm trying not to embarrass people, obviously, but the, they're old dudes, and they, they know their stuff. Uh, and it was a real pleasure today to go through every line item with them and challenge their thinking from a budget perspective. And I know that steps on toes once in a while because they're experts in their field, but they don't really have to, have to care about finance so much in their prior jobs as they do here. And, and I think they've taken that, that forward step, and you're going to hear that in their presentations today, as well as the other department heads. But I want to highlight uh, the success of what they've done. From an outsider, I don't work in this city on a daily basis, and I can tell you they get it, they care, and they worry about the numbers, and they can manage. They can get things done at the budget that's in front of them, and that's huge. All right, because you don't have extra money to pull with, right? All right, so that's my introduction. I want to thank everybody for their hard work, particularly today. But the comments earlier as to why there's no budget on the website. This isn't a final budget. This is a draft. It is draft ink, wet ink by staff as of today. Why so late? Well, it's actually early. What we've done is we've set up the process so that last, well, we lost a week because of July 4th. The week before July 1st, or the week, July 1st is when we get the certified appraiser's estimate for the 2020 uh, budget. That's the day we get that memo. We get that memo. That actually creates your revenue ceiling. How much money, excuse me, you're going to be able to build your budget from. So after that, after July 4th, we had we got together and started building the budget. And then today we went through that budget item by item. And it's laid out in your agenda. 2019, what we started with, what we've done as of May 31st. Uh, I'll tell you why it's only May 31st later and what the experts say they want to do or plan to do the next three and a half, four months. Then that tells you what 2020 would be a starting point. So drafting all that and circulating it is really a waste of time. And you'd be going through the same process 50 times and you'd be getting nowhere fast. So I'm very confident that the public will hear the logic of their department heads at the bottom, taking that term correctly, and they will hear the, the, the thought and the processes that got them to today's draft with your input, that process will take another step. And it will be a more refined commission-influenced draft at our next budget workshop. And then at that workshop, I, I call it a little bit of horse trading, where we decide what the results should be. We decide if there's any, uh, what, what the, any increases, whether they're legit or not. So you've got two weeks to think about that and talk about that. You come back, and then you, you as a group make a decision. We'll have that draft correct in front of you. And then at the first reading of the budget hearing, you'll fine tune it a little more, you'll hear more from the public, you'll, you'll make more adjustments if you see fit. And then you have another meeting. So I, I'm very confident that the next six weeks or more, the public is going to see lots of sausage making in a positive way and, and, be, and realize that they were included, included in every aspect of this process. 
what they weren't included in, which is what happened as of t today, is the behind the scenes professionals being professional. And it was boring. I'm really happy about it. So let's take a step off of the intro and, and move into uh, your revenue. All right, let's get to the money. If you look at your packet, uh, there, there's a little flaw in the, in the way these are put together. Is they're two separate, they're, they're, they're separate files, so the numbering system is, is a little hard. When there's a cover sheet or a spreadsheet, there's no number on it. But everything else is numbered, and, and they're labeled now, so you'll be able to uh, thumb through them. But I'll, I'll orient, you, orient you what I need you to see, and then as each department goes through, they'll, they'll walk you through the pages, so we're all on the same literal page. So I'm going to move to the, the, the third page, which looks like this, and it's your revenue. It's your, actually, it's your 2020 summary. Uh, so like all departments, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what was approved in the budget in 2019, what's happened since, what's going to happen to the end of this fiscal year, and then what we're going to do in 2020. I'm going to talk about just the revenue part, and then we'll move to each department who they spend the money. Right? So they don't, they don't have to focus on the revenue. That's Christian, myself, and Sharon. We, we, we track that, obviously. So starting off in uh, 2019, uh, and, and this, this sheet's excellent because it has a lot of information on it. On the, on the far right is the 2018 budget as adopted. <coughs> then you have the financial condition through May 31st, 2019. So those are like your financials, what your financials will be showing. The next column over is a projection, and I'll, I'll give you, uh, our philosophy on projections in government is always uh, harshly conservative in a good way. So we always look at things as though they're really bad for revenue, like you're not going to always get every penny. But, and then the opposite is true when we project expenses. We always look at it as most likely to be 100%. Like we have to have a reason not to project it all the way out as spent. And if we know there's a reason, we'll put that to the goal, but we put that in there. Uh, the next column is the 2019 adopted. This was the approved budget line. And then, of course, in blue is the, today's draft proposed 2020. And then there's some, some statistics after that, which uh, I'll, I'll point to in a minute. So the, the key element to you that you, as a commission, have control over is the revenue line on your Apple Warm. We all know what Apple Warm means, add value. It's based on the millage rate. You've had the same millage rate for many, many years. Uh, before this process is over, I'll put a chart on here of your historical millage just so you have it. Um, just back up for a second. This time last year, we were uh, calculating our millage with the uh, cloud over us and that there was a potential increase to the homestead exemption. So we had a little nervousness there. We also had nervousness of things were growing, they were increasing. You had a 12% increase last year, you had 10% the year before. I'll give you that chart at, at a later meeting, but today uh, you're at warm projected out at 6%. So you, what you what you see is probably the peak of, a, of a, an economic wave for housing values, and, a, and we're headed towards what I would call a level. I don't think it's a steep dive. That's that's not that big of a, of a decrease. When you go up 12%, but you only go down 6%, they've averaged you know, as, a, as a relatively decent increase. I think that's about 6% you know, across the board if you think across. Uh, so that said, the 2020 in the blue line uh, is showing at two two million one hundred four thousand five hundred forty six dollars, uh, and if you move immediately to the left, of that you'll see the one nine nine one one six five. That was last year's budgeted non warm calculation. Now, the state estimates your calculation, and we have the authority as a body to set our budget at. 100% of what they estimate, or a lesser number, no less than 95%. As a matter of financial policy I introduced last year, I calculate the budget on a 95%. And so if you move over to the dollar column, the far right, just before the 6%, you'll see 113381 Guess where that money comes from? That's the 5% that we didn't budget for. And what that does is that putting that amount of money automatically out of the budget in hand. And it goes straight to your bottom line. And that's protection. Because if that property estimate were wrong, where would you get it from? You, you have no recovery other than your reserves. This is a buffer that protects you from variations in the proposed estimate that they give you, which can change. Now, it won't change this year, but it could change next year. So this protects you from your 2021 variation in ad valorem. Does that make sense? That's why you do that. 
and you, you protect yourselves from future drops a year in advance by holding that 5% loan. You did it last year, and this budget does the exact same thing. Once you start doing that, the truth is you gain the, res the, the increase. This budget shows a 6% increase. Guess what? That is literally what the property value went up across the board. So you're getting the full 6%. Last year, you bit the bullet. When you had a 12% increase, only taking 95% of it, you just gave yourself, you took a break, and now you've got that money in the bank. If you keep doing that, then it's, a, it's an insurance policy. Uh, and that's advice of the finance department, and that was what was adopted. Uh, moving on, uh, the, that's all good news for you. Uh, I will highlight that the utility taxes, communication taxes, and franchise fees, and state shared revenue and local shared revenue, uh, excuse me, with the exception of local shared revenue, are all showing signs of the decline. Very slight, they're not huge parts of your, of your budget, and there's some economic factors, uh, the fuel tax uh, adjustments of now the, the price of gas goes down, people pay, usually spend the same amount of gas in your community or in your share, but with the price being a little lower, you get less money. So those are variable uh, revenues. We don't, we don't tie a lot of our existence to that revenue line because one, it's not so big. But later, in, if we get all the way through to the road fund today, you'll see that that really shows up a little bit. Uh, the balance of your revenues, the, uh, the permit fees and other items, those are tied to your building department. And, and you remember this from last year, but I think all of you were in the room, I think, last year. Uh, it, you, you arbitrary, you don't quite arbitrarily, but you almost arbitrarily estimate your building revenue because it's tied to permits and inspections, et cetera, et cetera. But you also have an equal, sorry, a corresponding expense line, and that's at 65%, right? So if you guess here, you're always six, within 65% of it. So if you guess low, as long as you guess low on the expense line, they move up and down equally. If you do this, you, you distort your budget. We test that, we look at that, and you're close, you're not untethered, I'll call it. So that line, I don't pay a lot of credence to it, if you follow me, because as permits drop, go up or drop down, the revenues and expenses go equally. Uh, but if, if you estimate them wrong, what you do is you take money out of your observation as a budgeter. And we don't want to do that too strongly. We want to do a little bit to, to deal with the, the ebb and flow, but it, you're not, it's not a problem, is my point. The, uh, the last couple things I want to talk about are uh, FEMA income. This time last year, our budget message was nothing extraordinary because we've got the albatross of getting or not getting refunded uh, upwards of $800 or more uh, $1,000 from FEMA. You all know the history. I won't believe that. We still don't have a check. So nothing's changed. We know there's an appeal, we know it's probable, we know it's approved so that through a step or two. But today we don't know that. We're not considering that as part of our reserves, we're not considering that as part of our budget. Uh, and that, I think that's approved. The other thing, this is some good news, uh, your interest income. We have the authority, as you know, to keep your extra cash or unnecessary cash per cycle into the highest interest bearing account either the state board or we, when we reshifted, when we shifted banks, we realized that the, the actual bank account that we have is almost equal or better than the state board interest rate. So you remember my policy, I, I sort of verbalized it, is to keep you at insurable levels and to generate a, a, as best or as close to the best possible interest income. With insurance being se secure and legal, and obviously uh, you have to have the cash available to write checks without missing a payment or not having cash to finish a check run. But if you don't want to do that, and you don't do that. So the good news is you are generating a, a decent amount of interest. Uh, so that's good news, which you are not prior to. Uh, some of it's market, some of it's banking relationship. The, the last thing is, or the, the last two things on revenue are you have a loan, which is related to you know using revenue to cover a, a, a debt payment. It's been refinanced. It freed up some of your cash. You remember that. Uh, it was a good business decision. Uh, I am not advising to do anything new with that loan, but I will tell, I will, I will hint at you that when the FEMA money comes in, you may want to pay off that loan. Uh, it's not a bad loan, but you don't need it. You know, I'd rather use your credit for things uh, like emergencies that you haven't had yet, that we're not going to have, right? Fingers crossed. Okay, got it. Uh, the last part. 
for you is reserves and how much should I have in the bank and how much should I be squirreling away for the things we own, the, the properties. Uh, one of the things that came up in the audit was a capital reserve plan, which you didn't have, and we, we generated one, and they didn't even like it. You know, we, we went through that at the, the other meeting. But the, the point is, in this industry, what you probably need to do is, is a third party. I can tell you what I think, but it doesn't matter. It, it, it's, it could be self-serving. Uh, so I, I advise, in the, in the near future, having a reserve study completed, which would do a couple things. It does what I do, or what Sharon and I do with, with these financials, we look at them like a finance person. Uh, but they, they also look at your assets, what, what their value is for insurance purposes. That's good to have in case they try to undervalue you or not pay you back for a damage. So it's good to have it in your, in your hand. But it also gives you a third party to your residents. To say, hey, this third party expert said this is what your reserve goal should be. And I, I highly recommend that. I, I'll give you a quote and we'll, we'll present it to you at a later date. Do you have a rough idea what Under $10,000. I've done them. I just don't know how they would do it on this scale of funds. Most of my clients only have one or two funds. They have a bond, a debt fund, and an operating fund. You have you with seven or eight funds, they might go up a little bit. Yes, sir. Where would that be budgeting? I'll get to that. I don't know is the answer, uh, but we'll, we'll get to it. Um, the, uh, so that analysis would, would set you up. Can I ask on the reserves, I know we had started out years ago, I think we were in the 400000 range. Yeah. Um, can you tell us where we are now, roughly, or where you project us to be at the end of the year? Yeah, I mean, uh, year to date, you're, you're, you're tracking in the seven dollars $800,000 currently. Um, we'll, we'll see, when I get to June financials, can I answer it then? Because that's yes. a little closer to the reality. So you know, ideally, if we got reversed from FEMA, and I'm being completely ideal you're in this case, million, you know, yeah. 1.6, right? Yeah, and my advice is, is if one year is operating for most of my organizations, that's that's pretty lofty for you guys. Uh, I would say that my guess, that an analyst would shoot somewhere in the area of one year's at the long. That would be a good baseline. And, you know, that's just cushion and insurance for the ebb and flow of your business. That isn't, uh, that isn't even the level of major rainy day problems. It's there for that. But you, what happens is you make choices to buy something that over five years is a huge benefit to you. But in one year, if you don't have the cash, you never do things that are a benefit to you long term. And so you, you always buy things short term thinking. So you, we've moved towards some smart leasing. We've moved towards some smart purchasing. You'll get better at that. And the bigger your reserves are, the better you'll be at that. Moving on to the, the macro of what your department heads are going to say uh, and, and what they're going to approach you with, uh, I will tell you the, the, the contractual uh, increases, meaning the collective like bargaining agreements, fixed expenses, are, are all reflected in this budget at, at contract amount, uh, as best we know. We had a couple of glitches with last year's budget where the property insurance, uh, health insurance, some of the insurance quotes came in after we had already pretty much nailed down the budget. We've accelerated that process as best we can and that's reflected in here. There's a couple more that are lingering, but we're pretty we know what happened last year, so we're better at estimating. Uh, but CBAs that just got worked out with public works, uh, the, the police ones intact. So you you have a, a, a clearer message of what your labor costs are. Uh, and we put that into this budget. So your labor is covered. Uh, we also uh, I added in a, a concept uh, that's missing and I'm gonna take a minute on this. You, you do not have a personnel department. You do not have a personnel handbook, so to speak. Uh, you have collective bargaining, well, you have for personnel, but you don't have a, a pay structure for all your personnel that they can look at and say, this is what I'm gonna get paid. Most of them are bargaining. The rest of them are exempt management level. So without that, if I were you, and, and I'm watching you from as, as an academic and as an administrator, uh, you are small, you have gone many years with high turnover. You spent a, a lot of money fixing finance. You spent a lot of money not spending them properly on projects because you just don't have, didn't have enough expertise in-house. Well, you fix that. Without a personnel plan, without a merit plan, without a carrot in front of these fine women and gentlemen, you, are, you risk costing. This is a, from a finance and a personnel director's hat. You, you risk financial costs by not keeping them incentivized and motivated. 
and you can throw 3% on everybody's pay, every budget, but if they get used to that, it doesn't incentivize, it doesn't create the character. Um, and it becomes uh, unhelpful. Uh, so this concept today presents a 5% increase uh, for staff uh, that are not in the CBA. And that 5%, what I'm recommending, is you give discretion to their boss and let him decide who gets it. Now, you've empowered him, and he can push buttons, he can move levers that he never had before. And you have the, the reassurance that the 3% is not having any effect. Uh, the, the other half of that equation is economics and marketing. You are not paying any of your employees at market rate. Sorry, you know, I think that's not a news flash to anybody. Market rate in South Florida with, with over 60 municipalities within 20 miles of here, they're paying a lot more than you are for these positions. What you've done is you've learned through trial and error, through wisdom, whatever, to hire. Uh, they're not old. They're, they're seasoned veterans in their professions. They're willing to forego retirement, <laughs> health insurance. He knew that was coming. Um, they're willing to, to use, you're getting a, a huge benefit. And they're also willing to take a lot less than they could make somewhere else. Why are they doing that? They can explain it to you. You ask them, I would guess, uh, they like touching their work product and seeing it happen. I guarantee you that's probably the reason. But they'd like to, to be paid a little bit more. They know that their hard work is being recognized. Um, and so all that added together, I won't bore you with any more detail from a personnel perspective, but I think this is the way to go. And we, we made today's budget with that logic in it. Uh, you would just need to empower uh, your manager with that when you approve the budget, and I think here it has that authority, but I just wanted to articulate it from a finance personnel angle that that's, I think that's helpful to you in the long run. It'll save you money a lot uh, for very reasons I just mentioned. Uh, so with that said, I think I've laid the groundwork. I told the audience why we're here, why we're doing things the way we're doing them, and I hope you all uh, give all the attention to Sharon for her hard work, because she's the one that actually does it, I did it again. Anyway, so thank you, and with that, uh, if there's any questions on a macro level, I think they'll come out through the process. So I prefer that we move right into the department. Absolutely. I just want to give a quick shout out to Sharon. I know how much work it takes to take everything and rebuild the finances from scratch. So thank you again. I know it's tremendous amount of work, especially the first go of finance. So thank you. Who's first? Okay. First, first stop is the mission. I didn't do your budget, by the way. I let you do that. <laughs> Commission starts uh, you know, eighth of an inch in. Uh, it's just before. You, the best way to find it is the thumb on the bottom right. And I don't know if we had time to tap these for you. I don't think so. So if you thumb on the bottom right, you'll see the labeling of each section. Oh, I see. Yeah. And so you just go backwards to the commission, and you'll find it. Um, last time, last time we were here, there were there was really not a lot of detail necessary with this one, so I didn't think you needed. Uh, a lot of time, um, and I actually thought that we could put this one off. If, if there are items you just mentioned, then we can bring it back to you. But it, it's basically built in. We adjusted the training already last year. Uh, everything else is in place. That was well vetted out last year by you all, with the exception of the two new folks. But I, I had a feeling that this one didn't need a lot of discussion. And so, and actually, we have not changed. I don't believe we've changed anything in this from last year. Probably the way I said it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and I didn't think today that would be a debate or discussion. So if there's no questions, we can move to the next department. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the administ administration. The administration would be Mr. Manners. So he has to get up and move the chair on the left. Yeah. <laughs> and with this one, it's you know, the raises that Paul discussed earlier. Um, for the clerk, the full-time administrative assistant. And we do want to keep in some money there for a part-time administrative assistant in case we need that. If I can make it here, that's fine. Retirement contributions, that's all. That will go up moderately if we give the pay increases, but that's it. Um, health and life insurance, those are the same. Yeah, the highlights we actually covered last meeting where we talked about professional <coughs> services. You 
took that budget going into here, but we also projected out a, a twenty thousand dollar, the twenty yeah twenty thousand dollar contingency, uh, as well as uh, reflecting the increases in. The other one was the property insurance. That one, you may remember, because we got the property insurance bill late, uh, it was a sizable increase that's reflected and projected forward for this year. So those are the highlights why it went from a 719 to a 792. So that's a, this is the one budget that actually has a change to it, but those are changes you're well aware of. On professional services, um, we went a little over on meeting code, so we raised that one from 1,000 to 2,000 um, for 2020. Yeah, you want to show them on page you're, you're getting I'm sorry, on page 925 now. So in the narrative section, as you can flip through to where it says 925 on the bottom, you'll see that it's going through. Everybody got it? Are you all with me? Okay. So the media code we just raised to 2000 That's an increase of $1,000. Um, Currently here today at 1503, so we anticipate that going up a little. Um, for that one, let's see, Loxia Technologies, that's the IT department for the police. And so last year we had a day 400. Uh, we proposed that same amount for next year. Um, the annual gut office package for our website, we anticipate 700 for that as opposed to 650. And then, of course, the, the big one that we encountered this year was the legal counsel under that and so we propose again $75,000 for that next year um, free employment screenings the same and then we are putting in a contingency of 25000 so that should one of these items run over then we have uh, that contingency fund there that we can tap into that, that was from the direction of the last commission meeting where we were talking about if you put all the money in the legal line they sort of look towards it this, this solves that a little bit I don't know how, how impactful that is but it's a good reasonable strategy to keep it as a contingency line at the discretion of, of council management and it's not sitting there with the legal department so it has a target for their expenses. Uh, and I hope I articulated what you meant last meeting because it's a lot. Any questions on that? Those items? No. Next page, page 1025. Um, the auditors. We adopted a, a $21,000 budget last year, same for next year. Um, for our finance contract with GMS, okay, so that was last year we adopted it at $46,350. Um, they have asked for an increase up to $65. Um, I would like to increase them up to $55 at this point because they are certainly doing far above and beyond um, what we've ever, ever expected of them. So I think that's a reasonable amount. I think that's less money than we had a single finance person working full time with Sprint. I'm sorry? When we had a single finance person working with Sprint, it was about that. It was actually. It was more than that. It was, it was about, it was about yeah. that. And he had a clerk as well. And he had a clerk. So, yeah. so we're still, we still have good savings there, and more importantly, we have continuity and we have debt. So that, you know, God forbid sharing get hit by a bus. But, you know, there's someone else to fill in. We have a dozen accounts. How about she just wants a lottery? <laughs> okay. That might be better advice. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> so when Sharon wins the lottery. <laughs> All right. So any questions on those? Travel via. Um, all of that is pretty much the same. Actually, a slight, slight decrease in the auto allowance for me and I'll, I'll explain that one. Do you remember last year we had a, we left it a little high because we weren't sure if it was a net uh, tax benefit in his contract. Uh, that It was silent. So at this time, uh, I've agreed for our purposes, let's lower it and should something come up that changes that, thinking we can deal with it at that time. So it's a nominal amount, but how do we better than that? Next page, page 12 of 25. Most of that is the same. If you go down to the phone system in Village Hall, we paid off the old phone system. And it was absolutely the cheapest phone system we could get at the time. Uh, it is already outdated and it's already failing a lot. 
Um, I would like to replace that. I have an estimate um, for a better phone system that also works off of the cloud. So that should power go out in Village Hall, that sort of thing, we can still get messages that go to a, a cloud-based system. Um, we can check them from cell phones. We can actually forward it to a cell phone. Is so it hardware or voice? Do you know if it's hardware or voice over internet? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. I would say it's probably VOIP, but I don't know for certain. I don't know for certain on that one. But, so we put in 5000 for that um, for next year, and that would probably be a down payment, and we finance the, the remainder of it. Um, the whole system is, I believe, 13000 which our old system was I want to say 10000 So, in the two years, this year to date, and 2020 money, that, that will be fine. Okay. Next item is audio equipment for the log cabin. Um, we have all talked about that, and how we take the current one that we have. Uh, we've looked at doing, and I talked with the, the phone doctor folks about doing a hardwired system, which is what's going to work best. But then it, that puts us at the point of drilling into a the bayus as well as a historic building, which we don't want. Um, they have said that and, and showed me some good systems that are wireless that <coughs> should address the, the issues that we have with our microphones there. Um, they're rechargeable. They're not batteries. So we're not sitting there going, you know, watching the batteries die through each meeting. And so from that perspective, so. Um, again, that's one that we would put a down payment on in finance, so the down payment is 5000 on that. Um, alarm system, log cabin, needs to be all. That's, we increased that a little bit to $1,198. And then rest Comcast, Village Hall, or log cabin, Village Hall. Uh, website, new design. We have 7000 in the budget for us this year for the new website design. I'm going to put 7000 in the budget for next year as well. Um, I've been working um, with Roseanne and Commissioner Tudor on that, um, getting estimates. We have four estimates now. Most are running around around 12 to 13000 for something that meets the ADA requirements that we're going to need to meet and for what we need to do. We certainly need a, a new website. We all agree on that. And so. Because you're putting half the last and half forward, how are you going to do that? I'm sorry? Because you're putting half during two budgets, how do you, how do you We would probably start on it in September. Yeah, from a finance perspective, that's going to happen a few times today. What we would do, what we'll do is, if they don't, if they don't put a deposit or start spending money in this fiscal year, uh, we'll have an encumbrance list and we'll, we'll mark that money so that we're not double budgeting it or under budgeting it. We'll, we'll keep track of that and then we have that noted. And I think also something to bring out about the website. Um, Redesign. Uh, it will be meet the ADA compliance standpoint. Uh, it's definitely going to be much more user friendly, easier to update information on. Um, one of the uh, one of the companies I think that you get quote from is from Gov Office who currently host it, so they're already familiar uh, with us. Uh, part of that from Gov Office, part of that the uh, associated website design is also quarterly ADA review. It is. on the website to make sure. So they do a quarterly review to, to ensure that it's maintaining ADA compliance because when they initially launch the website, it's good. But then as we start adding information to the website, that's where some municipalities get in trouble because that's where some of the ADA issues can arise. They'll actually do that on a quarterly basis. I mean, we can also look to, uh, to look at third parties, but it may be easier to whatever website company website company to go with to have them do the ADA compliance because they identify something they can quickly be updated. And they also have a liability that they don't yeah. and, and is that an ongoing subscription fee or is that built into the initial price of the website? Uh, that would be an on, there would be an ongoing subscription fee for that. I want to say uh, what did you recall off the top of your head? I don't I think annually it's like twelve hundred I think for the one so, is, is easily absorbed and, and it's, and it's, frankly, it's like an insurance policy. It's just the point of the ADA. And given the, I mean, the, given the number of uh, articles and lawsuits. out there about lawsuits, there's been some recently with some of our sister municipalities. 
I mean, it's, it's one of the things that we're going to have to get on top of. So, but I thought it was important to, to kind of throw in there that part of that is also going to include JD and if it's necessary, can you make sure this fund's allocated so that someone's trained to manage the site afterward? Oh, absolutely. It's great that you're going to spend money that's wonderful and get it fixed, but if somebody's not comfortable on a regular basis managing it, so if that's needed, please. Absolutely. And then on page 1325, um, mostly it's the same as last year. Um, it's just really that's just postage at X costs, um, which are up a little bit. But, um, and then the Aeromail resource company for mailings, that sort of thing. But, uh, that's all just standard. Um, on page 14 of 25, utilities, um, those we you know, adopted for Village Hall Electric Service uh, last year. That's actually down a little bit for next year, our proposal, um, as well as for the log cabin. So we're just using less electricity from a little more efficient there. And then water and sewer, which are you know, just standard items that we have to pay. And so those are all pretty much the, the same. Um, rentals and leases, the copier. This is the copier at Village Hall, the large one um, that I don't know if that would increase next year. We had adopted 3780. We're putting in, we bumped it up a little bit just in case there's increased usage on it. Um, by about $900 or so is what we bumped it up. But I'd rather have the money there and not need it than not have it and do need it. Uh, record storage facility, Iron Mountain, which we all load. And so that one's at $32.21. That went up at $221 for next year. And we'll be looking at, as we work towards digitizing things, and we'll be looking at getting rid of them. Uh, bottled water cooler, we're drinking more water. And so that's up a little bit. So in 2019, we um, had $250 um, for the year for that, for Village Hall. Um, we used 464 today, so we're budgeting 697 for next year. Commercial insurance, um, again, we've increased that, anticipating an increase on that. We do not have the numbers. We've requested the, the new numbers from FMIT. They've not gotten them to us yet, but as soon as we have the solid numbers, we'll be good. But we've, we've made substantial increases there just to cover that through this, this budget. Repairs and maintenance for vehicles. Um, this was for the car, the Toyota, the admin car, which we've surplused. And so this one actually, we can take the 950 out of this because we no longer have an admin car. I'm sorry? Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. <coughs> repairs, yeah. We spent 67 of the 950 this year in repairs and maintenance on that vehicle. Um, that vehicle's gone, so next year we'll be safe. You have an admin card on the kitchen shirt, sure, right? I'm sorry? On the other, on page uh, 16 and 25, you have an auto there. Is that for the sure. shirt? So is that an admin That's actually, yeah, that actually. We, that would go too, correct? That would go as well. Okay. So that's another question. Then on page 8225, training binding, that's 1,000. Newsletter, we still want to do that. That's at 3,600. That's what we originally budgeted, and then we're going to keep that. Um, the promotional activities on the next page, we're keeping that at 1,500. Um, this year we've done a little bit extra, so it's at 1732, but we should bring it in at 1500 next year. And um, legal advertising, again, we had some surprises with that. Um, so next year we're going to bump that up about $700 to 8913. So municipal elections, nothing budgeted for that next year. Page 20 to 25. Licenses and permits with Microsoft, that's increased substantially. And so we budgeted 2000 in 2019. Um, year to date, we're at 3684, and so we're budgeting 5526 on that. Now, these are the licenses and permits for Microsoft systems throughout the village. It's not just admin, this is for the police department, this is for public works, yeah, for the rest of the There's a comment I want to make about some of your budgeting. 
sort of do two things at some time. You try to keep your expenses for each purpose in their own budget line. But some there's some topics that look they're better and easier to track if they're aggregated in a department. Licensing uh, is all under the, the manager's administrative office. The uh, website costs are all like we don't share out all those things. Uh, later today you'll hear why fuel is all under the public safety or police department. Uh, you'll see Public Works sort of does things for every department, so they aggregate a lot of expenses in their budget. And the reason you do that is so you can see the big picture a little better, because if you split it up $100 in five different departments, you don't see that it's a $500 expense that went up $500. You only see each one going up $100. So that there's some of, we sort of mix our metaphors, so to speak, in these budget lines. But those, the ones that are, are aggregated, it's for a pretty good reason for your eyes and for finance tracking. Uh, there's a couple times throughout this process, either today or in our next meeting, where you may, we may say, you know, that may help us to split it up or may not. So I'm not suggesting that there's some of those, but if you start to wonder that some of it's for comfort. With that said, it's like, you know, since it's a bit of a substantial increase and since it is aggregate, can you just explain why so that the audience also appreciates why the number has gone up? that much for licensing and for Microsoft? For them? <laughs> yeah. yeah, one of the things that we have to update, upgrade our Adobe um, system, basically in all the, the all computers, uh, because we, we have to prepare for the ADA compliance, so all the documents that comes from any department is uh, the, the uh, graded adult can handle the PDF. So that was the PDF. Yeah, PDF. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Uh, everything we, we do have to ask to now, it's going to go on the website and set so forth, we'll now have to convert it into um, a PDF mm -hmm. to Adobe. Um, but it also has to, to become ADA compliant. And so we needed software on pretty much every computer to do that. And that's part of the, the cost. And that's the licensing through Adobe, correct? I believe that's what how Adobe works now. It's all subscription. You're not actually yeah. downloading. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we it's, use all, it's all. I don't it's all. Adobe. Adobe. It's all Adobe. software. It's all 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 It's all software. It's all software. It's all software. It's all software. It's all software.
and um, it's just, you know, it, we're all sitting at our computers now, moving the mouse and growling at the computer because it can't keep up with our, you know, with our abilities to even type, and I'm not a great typist. So. Um, for the server, you have a $400 upgrade. Is that going to be sufficient money? Um, that's what it was last year. Um, we don't plan, we don't anticipate a server upgrade this year necessarily, but I wanted to go ahead and just carry that over just in case. Uh, memberships and dues, those are essentially the same. We saw uh, the dues for ICMA, FCCM, and um, For me, so we had about 1250 budgeted last year, went to 1503. So we're budgeting for 1550 for next year. Um, for the clerk, we budgeted 250. She's at 245 now, so we're going to move that up to 300 for next year. And then finance, software, licensing. This is for uh, licensing for BSNA. That should still be the same as last year. Uh, excuse me, GFOA membership. That should be 500. We budgeted that for 2019. We're keeping that. Costco, which is at 175, and then miscellaneous, which we knock down to zero. Education and training for the manager and the clerk. Um, we do want to increase that to 4,000, and for staff, we're keeping that at 1,000 right now. And then contingency, we've got that. We got that at 21,421 last year. And we'll keep it there again this year. Just to have that little bit of breathing space should it be needed. And then on to debt service. Yeah, we've covered debt service fairly well. There's no change to that, and there's no anticipation of a payoff recommendation at this time. However, when the money payment comes back, we'll be re-releasing that. All right. So next up is please Dr. Chief, you want to join me up here? part-time officers, we reduce the, we create some attrition with the high-level paying employees that have moved on, and we, we take other strategies, we can reduce overtime. And we've been effective in that category, and um, I predict that for next year, we're gonna even do better. Um, and the numbers speak for themselves. Training is an area that I, I really wanted to focus on, as you all know. Uh, part of the issues that occurred in the past were the areas of deficiencies because of training. Uh, a well-trained department is a department that tends to perform better and reduce liabilities. So we, we, um, 
we contacted the Florida International University. We conducted training with them last year. Um, we've been in talks with the FBI, um, FDOE, and the State Attorney's Office for, and the Public Defender's Office for additional training, uh, training for the department. So, you know, as we move forward, the future as far as having better trained, better prepared, more knowledgeable, and officers with experience is, is there. Crime reduction, the, uh, the manager touched on it, and uh, early, I said, 2018, 2019, and, and present, this is where I'm going now with crime. In, in 2019, in 2018, in, in, in crime, and in overall crime, we had a reduction of over 30%, and violent crime, over 40%, and right now, in the first six months of the year, we're tracking even better than that. And all of these numbers are, are there, it's the reports we get every day, the incidents we get, and I contribute that um, to the amount of police presence that we, ca we have out there on a daily basis. Our, our staffing has gone basically from one officer a shift to, to a minimum of two, and at the majority of the time, two, three, and four. So um, the, the amount of officers that we have there has increased, and I'll discuss <coughs> staffing. Now, we went from a staffing when I got here. Do you want to go through the pages that they have in front of them so they can follow along? I was just going to give them a quick highlight, so when okay. I go to the pages. Okay. You're still in the highlight part, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. So with staffing, um, we went from uh, 15 officers when, when, when uh, uh, my, my command staff, Nick and, and, and uh, Sandy were here, to now 43. And I'll, I'll break that down. Um, like the CFO was discussing, we were able to get donated vehicles, which saved us in cost for donated vehicles, which saved us in, in, in future costs. Um, our, our police, superior police services, which is something that I wanted to continue to focus on, we've, we've uh, continued to improve. Automated record keeping, I'll discuss. Workman comp, we're, we're, we're looking at strategies of reducing it. If you look at your current workman comp at the police department, it's been reduced. Um, attrition within the department. Um, we have taken different actions on, on moving personnel and, and the changes we've done to become more effective and efficient in our process. Um, I'll discuss the radios um, and I'll get into other areas. Uh, it's very important uh, that you, you understand that we can change a lot of the business process within the police department. But at the end of the day, the police department has a core function, and we don't get away from that, which, whether it's if we investigate crimes, whether we investigate ourselves, which we now have an IA investigator. Matter of fact, today, we're in North Miami taking a statement. So we, we, you know, part of the goal here is to continue to provide the services that police departments provide throughout the Dade County and the nation, but, you know, effectively and efficiently and in a superior manner. So I'll go over the budget really quick since I've kind of given you a quick highlight. Um, I'll just point out some, some items. It says here, Chief Commander, Detective, and Officers. I'll give you a more accurate breakdown. Uh, as of this point, you have one chief, um, one commander, one captain, two corporals, which is now supervision. That was something that was lacking before, supervision in the field. You have five full-time officers. Four time, four part-time officers, and 29 reserve officers. And I'll go really quick again, so you guys make sure we all note this for the record. One chief, one commander, one captain, two corporals, five full-time officers, four part-time officers, and 29 reserves for a total of 43. Am I okay to move on? I just. We started at five, so I'm just. <laughs> yeah, we were at five before, and we. For reserve officers. Yeah, we've increased quite a bit. We're at 29. Um, as you can see here, part of the strategy was to augment some of the full time salaries, benefits, uh, and packages that go along with having full time employees, and augment that with the part time officers, which are have a fixed salary. And, and they're not included in the benefits package. But at the same time, there are officers who have, this is a secondary now career, have an enormous amount of experience, and are 
go beyond beyond the cause of duty in order to provide these services to the village. So you see the part-time salaries there. Um, we removed the clerk's position, it's no longer there. Part of that went into the captain's salary. Staff, so. Yes. That has brought a tremendous amount of efficiency within the department, and I'll, and I'll talk about that really quick. We now automated our records within the police department for the last, the past two or three years, and we're now going to be focusing on going back, for, uh, back to 2012, 10, and we've discussed with the manager that I forecast that by next year, it's like about a uh, sitting at this table, if I'm sitting at this table, that um, we'll be able to say that we've automated all the police records, and then the ones that we haven't automated that uh, the state attorney's office delegates that we can destroy, we'll, dest we'll destroy, and and the other records we will store. There's records you can never, never destroy, and if you automate them, you still have to store them. Uh, sexual battery cases, homicides, and so on. You have to have yeah, the, uh, the automated and the physical, the physical records. The overtime, uh, any questions? The overtime costs uh, have been reduced due to the initiatives and, and the different uh, strategies that we've implemented. Can I ask a good question, Liz? Yes. Projected end of year? Well, it'll be under, correct? Quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. This is a placeholder also. Because of operational tempo, you can blow your overtime because you have an event. So you will need it in here so you get funds or not. That's tremendous. Yeah. Yeah, I mean just just to say this out loud, uh, currently here, here today, we did budget fifty thousand. Um, if you currently we're at fourteen thousand seven hundred and fifty, so it's far below what was budgeted. And um, it, it's we do want that to be down to push out. You know, Congratulations, Chief. That's fantastic. That is excellent. And, I mean, we want the cushion because if there's a hurricane or something like that, um, we could need it. Right. It's for the overtime that having the reserve officers is what's really kept that overtime. Yeah. yeah. It was kind of a holistic strategy with the reserve officers, the the um, the part time officers, my staff. I, I, I go to the field, uh, the commander goes to the field. The captain goes to the field, and you know we're we're, we're interactive, we're involved. So it's it's been a whole. So we make sure that unless it's absolutely absolutely really really needed, we don't put that that additional. It's tremendous. I think I think I read it a few years ago. Way over, way over the fifty. And and with officers doing uh, work outside, that helps a lot too. No, no, that's off to that's, that's off duty. That's a I mean, off duty. That does it, that helps them a lot. That helps them. That's that's necessarily off the that's them. Yeah. Okay, um, so the category, the next one is uh, you know comp uh, comp comp time, FDLE and sentence court time and off and off duty police. The only thing I want to note on this really quick, and we had a discussion now, I have a better grasp, I'll explain that. To me, this is the thirteen thousand seven ninety five is not a negative; it's a passive. So basically, what that means is that he has to be able to account for it. When the officers work off duty, uh, let's say at North Miami at the Home Depot, the Publix, or wherever they are at, though we, uh, the village will receive that check or that amount of money. They have to show that they receive this amount of money, and then they they pass it, they uh, forward the checks to the officer. So this is basically a neutral zero. Are you tracking this differently? I'm assuming it's where the put it here. Okay. Well, we have to be able to do it. Uh, FICA Medicare, self explanatory, retirement, uh, contributions. Um, we're tracking a lot lower than that. I think we're tracking probably about what we do in the factory now. Yeah. Okay. Put that right on that. Okay. So well, the audit? Yeah, and this is formulaic with the proposed uh, salary adjustments that the chief is recommending. So this flows through now. So we don't have to question it and double check it. We did that today. Health insurance is what we have now. Um, a lot of our officers, so talking about efficiency and being effective on how we want to manage our resources. Part of the strategy that I, I brought in is, I brought a, a 
called WE. There's no I, it's a team, it's WE. Uh, we brought in a team of retired officers that have a wealth of experience, but also already have uh, a retirement from other uh, departments and insurance. So when they came over, um, they didn't up our insurance, they just kept theirs. And we probably have quite a bit of officers, so that's an, an additional savings in, in the bank situation. situation. The, the experience plus less cost, so that's we'll get that in every situation. Yeah, that was part of the strategy. Workman's comp, right there. Travel and premium, <coughs> I'm not allowed to leave the office. Yes. Communications. Yeah, we've cleaned up. We, we've had historical budgeting habits that we've corrected and we know better now, so we, we we're confident to eliminate the phone allowances. They would should attributed out of the pay system. There were people who used to be paid in their pay for their phone, and then now they're issued a phone through their air card, and so we've got that type to go for that. So it's a zero now for 2020. Okay, you'll see that actually the air cards um, for Verizon Wireless are at zero for 2020. If you notice AT&T Mobility, we moved to that. So whereas that was a zero last year, that's now budgeted for it. Okay, it's a contractor switch. So it's all good. Which they provide us a network where if we go down, AT&T guarantees that public safety will stay will immediately come right back up, or they'll go into another another antenna zone frequency, whatever they call it, and we'll be able to get services immediately. It's a priority. Yeah, it's a priority, so we can provide the, the service costs. Um, electric utilities are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there. Rentals and leases. The manager talked about bottled water. I'm trying to you know, make sure we reduce that. Our reserves are thirsty. Yeah. <laughs> and then the leases. more people now. So yeah. that's the, one of the things that we didn't expect the water costs would go up. So it's kind of funny. Yeah. And the leases haven't changed. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Have we looked into anything else besides the bottled water? Yeah, the filtering systems effective? are pretty successful. We were looking into some of those. Roseanne had, had actually mentioned that to a company. Uh, it's unfortunately the way we'd have to do it because not every place has mm -hmm. water. Mm -hmm. uh, like the police department, they don't have a kitchen. So, and then when Village Hall side is closed and locked, the police can't get in there. So they need their water over there. So it can, you know, it would be running new water lines and additional expenses there. There's no sink on the side? There's a sink in the bathroom. Oh, there's no sink. Okay. But, yeah, there's no, no kitchen area sink like we have in Village Hall. And so that's one of the issues with that. And so, I mean, we can we can certainly look at it, but right now bottled water is, seems to be the, the most effective and the best that it could be. <coughs> And it's Utilize not bottled water. water. Right, it's just, that's why yeah, it's, it's, it's really clear. It's, it's the, the uh, cooler. This is the bottled water that we buy for you know, commission meetings, that sort of thing. Okay. And that was, that was my mistake. I thought that's why. It's a little, it's a big cooler. Um, tastes like bottled water, so. <laughs> so the leases are basically as is, as you can tell. One of them will be expiring, so we'll have somewhat of a savings there, but in order to keep up the fleet, Working with enterprise, uh, they opt to remove these vehicles while they're at, we can resell them at an optimal price and exchange it for a newer vehicle so we don't continue to incur the same cost. So at the bottom of that page, you'll see there's a 2019 proposed course that, that takes over the spot of the 2014 one at the top. And so that, that list will, will rotate just like that in the area of the rest per year. Now you've got Couple of years we have multiple cars, so you may not buy two or anything like that. You cheap make that call, but from a finance standpoint, you're starting to get static expected cost, which is goal. You want to have that straight line, etc. And um, I, this year we kind of began to um, we put money into bringing our our vehicles up up to the appropriate conditions they need to be. That's why. I, at one point or another, we'll just you know we'll discuss the repair maintenance budget. That it's 
it had struck a little higher, but these vehicles were not in the conditions they needed to be. Plus, when we received the four donated vehicles, we brought those vehicles, because they were, at the end, at the end meeting, they're going to bring us the savings. We're not buying additional vehicles. We're not asking for more vehicles. So um, these vehicles will assist us with the additional 29 reserves where when they get here, and we'll have three or four uh, men and women working out here, they have people, they grab a car, and they can, they can go out here and, 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 and patrol. Before, we had uh, maybe two vehicles, and, and now we have a, a fleet that can uh, address the, the additional reserves that we have in the village. You having as many cars down as you work with them? I don't like one of those cars when you shop right We don't, I, uh, man, it's a great question. We don't um, have that issue anymore. It's, it's just been challenging because with the donated vehicles, we have to bring them, you know, get them operable. And then with the, the vehicles that were here already, we, we, we wanted to make sure they had the, the safety equipment and all and everything that they needed. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Um, liability insurance is standard. So, I want to go over now repair and maintenance. There's a category I think is really important, our uh, radios. And this is where we look at every opportunity we can to uh, not only save this commission money, but uh, be efficient in how we manage our, our operations at the police department. We were spending, we were renting four radios from the county. Those radios were costing me, or costing the department and the village a hundred dollars a month to try to was outrageous. Uh, there was nothing we could basically do until, you know, uh, they had expired and then we went into this, we, we decided to lease them. We, I'm sorry, lease to home. So we got 10 radios that at the end of the lease, we're going to own them. We don't have to purchase radios ever again. And we got them for $540 a month so far. For an additional hundred plus dollars, we got an additional six radios. We own them, and we don't have to be at the mercy of another another jurisdiction for these radios. So, so that's one of the. And, and the, the highlight to me is if you look at the year to date and the adopted budget, uh, the chief expects you may be over a little bit. I'll explain that in a minute. But your budget projected is still going to be the same for 2020. So that's you want to cover the vehicle? Yeah, it's kind of, I think you did. Yeah, that's what I explained. It, this was just, you know, my first year here was a, it's a challenge. It was a challenge to bring this fleet up to where it needs to be. So I expect, and, and I've had this conversation with the manager and, and, and the finance director that we're going to do it besides the, 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 the public safety services that we're providing you, budget secretary, administratively, overall, I think. The 2020 year, 2020 will be a successful year for for the department. I have a question. You have 11 cars for leases. Uh, I know we own some outright, um, but you have under auto insurance and paid 14 of 20 of 21 cars. Right. That includes just so we're we're on the same page. That includes the two motorcycles, oh, okay. the 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 four the vehicles that the donation vehicles, the ones we had already, um, you know, the other vehicles. Part of the strategy that I've discussed with the manager, but every, you know, we want to see our, where we're at as we track uh, after the 2020 budget is turning some of the, the vehicles that we had uh, in our on our fleet going to selling them, you know, just turning on and selling them, and then use that money for for newer vehicles. So we're definitely looking at that. It's just we don't want to get ahead of ourselves yet because of the amount of officers we we've uh, acquired. Uh, printing and binding now. Uh, yeah, so it's really the same, and we only use ninety dollars. Uh, operating supplies. Um, with, if you look at the uniform category, it's a little higher. Um, and I'm actually, I actually feel comfortable, and I'll tell you why. When you go from fifteen officers to forty-three, and you stay within your budget. I mean, that tells you, you know, uh, part of the... They're swapping clothes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, 
part of the strategy, and, and I've discussed this with the managers, I've sat down and, I, and the staff, the executive staff and myself, we talk to the owners. And we tell them, the contract says um, you, you're, you're allowed of this, this, and this. As you need the, the, the items, then we will do a damage report and, and we'll provide that to you. And we try to make sure there's no waste, wasteful spending and that whatever equipment, uniforms, or anything they have is really necessary. And it's just that I'm buying it because I'm entitled to it and the money's there. No, we're fine. If, if, if we save here, I can, uh, we can buy a, a, a radar gun, we can buy this. So that's kind of the, the frame, how, you know, how it kind of changed the way the officers look at things. You know, uh, whatever we say here, we can benefit in another area. Is there anything? Yeah. Just public safety equipment, what if you have a 6,000, was it just something you had in mind on that? Or? Yeah, um, we're, look, we're looking at, at different, uh, I wanted to leave, leave that those dollars as we address things now in the very near future. For example, we've had, you know, across the country, the active shooting stuff going on. I've looked at and we've discussed, you know, some of the things they put in with me, like the ballistic shield. Um, so the, there's a, there's, a, you know, we may, we may, the village may have a need for, for you know, a, a equipment like we talked about. Well, I'm not objecting. Point, I just wanted you to articulate why it's there. Yeah, uh, uh, and I just want to make sure that it's available, so at, we we can have it as we. Was, was there somewhere within your budget where you were um, looking at expanding your pilot program around the, the speed calming pilot that you, you, know, you were talking about? That will be in public works. Okay. Okay, that's not part of your budget. Did you have enough radar guns in 6 like that? Do you have enough? Yeah. Um, and those are the areas, you know, um, the radar guns, the, um, and we were talking Today, the, um, of the, the defibrillators, yeah. you know, pepper uh, spray. The, pep, you know the, the pepper spray, the not uh, less lethal stuff, um, in order to make sure that when an officer responds, they have other resources that have to use deadly force. Um, you know, I've talked to the manager, maybe in the near future, equipping each vehicle with, with a defibrillator. As you know, in many cases, sometimes officers are the first ones to arrive before the rescue. And I, you know, so I don't. I, I wanted to make sure we left enough room as things come up. You know, and if it's not used, it goes back to. Uh, so, so that's not the big idea that's not budgeted in here. Yeah. yeah. Well, what we did do is we, we sort of left uh, some agility in, in for the chief to have throughout the year by, by using a general equipment line of $6,000 and you can see $7,600. We just thought that we didn't want to hand him in on, on a specific program that, that two months into the year he's going to say, no, this is a better choice. We just thought we'd leave instructions to the chief. And, and I, I guess this will be the best example. Um, I'm only purchasing at this point. We're looking at purchasing in, in, for the next budget, 15 tasers, the, the, the tasers that are now in the market. I have, you know, the math is there, we have 43 officers. I'm looking in the near future, probably keep it at 40. So the other officers, that, that they're, they're getting the pepper spray, but not the tasers. The full-time and part-time are getting tasers and pepper, pepper sprays. So I'm looking at, as that pilot, I evolved that pilot, Am I going to give the additional reserve officers space? I want to be able to have that in my budget, you know, if, 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 if we need that's that's necessary. Dues and memberships. That's saying education and training. Yeah, with FIU, just um, we, we last year we paid seventy five hundred, and that's why you see. A little high, that was so, but that's for three years. So we're done. It says two, three. So we're done. So. The the laptops, the motorcycle warranty. And again, another consistency line. 
obviously the control of the budget. So we wanted to keep those placeholders in there as he determines the, you know, the final course of the project at the year. He can come back and let us know we're buying that kind of thing from a budget standpoint. Uh, How much does the defibrillator cost? Uh, Roughly how much does the defibrillator cost? I don't have that number, but I think it should be $1,500. I was going to say about, probably about 1500 Yeah, it depends how you license them. They have to be licensed by a physician. So usually the company has to you know, buy a bunch of them, get them all under the same license. That can be cut off. You have several in the city. I'm just going to think about it. Because we have an aging community. <coughs> the idea of the course, the course Yeah, you know, in the future, the way to, the way to go is try to work and then I, when I was back in the city, I kept saying this, and, you know, get these vehicles with a package where they have everything included in it, you know, so you're able to, you know, it's part of your, your budget when you budget these vehicles. So that's something, we just got Enterprise the middle of last year, almost at the end. So that is something I'm gonna work with them in, in, the, in the near future to see if, once we get these vehicles, they have the defibrillator, they have the, you know, the rifle rack or whatever you need out there, you know, the equipment that's, that's needed, and we don't have to keep going to other vendors and it costs you twice as much. Could we benefit by establishing some interlocal agreements with, for example, the city of Miami or city of North Miami, um, maybe Miami-Dade County with their fire rescue? Um, I know they all have their own medical director, so if we decide to go the AED route, um, that may be that may be a good way to go. Yeah, I absolutely think that that we would benefit, and I think it's it's great for the village and the community because many many times we we rely on the county to be able to provide these services, but in a, in in, an, in a case of an emergency and you have you need critical resources, they may not be the available resource, and it happens. And uh, in my experience in law enforcement. I can be uh, saying this, I need a unit to back me up now, 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 now is North Miami, but if we don't have that mutual way, it may be the city coming, it may be a hotel, it may be uh, any other jurisdiction. Same thing in here. If, if we happen to have a critical person or an active shooter somewhere, um, but they're tied up in a major airplane crash, you know, blocks in here, you have to be able to say, hey, we do have an agreement with the city, or we, you know, so, you know, we have other other agreements with other municipalities that they can respond. I think they're extremely important. Plus, for training, for equipment, public and currently, uh, the county is extreme. It's huge. It, they're tied up. They have a lot of equipment invested. They're going to invest in the county. You may need, you know, the city may be able to lend you a, a front end or uh, other equipment that, and and they're a lot closer. And, and they'll have these resources, of course. So these are the advantages that will provide. Any more questions for the chief? Okay. Thank you, chief. Okay, next up, building services. Um, that one really hasn't changed much. We've been in a race for Jean Paul. Um, that's five percent. Yes. Yeah, five percent, and um, so that increased, you know, FICO Medicare or our mm -hmm. contributions by five percent, mm -hmm. and so health insurance up a little bit, three percent, and that's really it. There's no other changes, I don't think, to that one. And that's what now it's tied to the revenue from the permit process, the, the operating line on that one is professional service. And just for, for clarity, like for instance, a, a five percent increase in his salary really comes out to a little over a thousand dollars. So it's it's not a huge increase. Do you have any monies for zoning? Um, for zoning review? No, we have talked about zoning review. Yeah. <coughs> we can certainly add that to it. Um, that would be again that would be under professional services here. And that would be a pass through just like um, a building inspector would be. Uh, that's yeah, that's true. Yeah, I've, I've already talked with um, Carl Cavendish or Dono about that, so we, we're ready to implement that. It's cost neutral. So. Yes, I, I don't yeah. Awesome. Okay. And that's really it for building. So, any 
questions about building. Okay, code compliance. Ms. Caserta? You want to sling it over here? Sling it over there.
transparency piece to see what you're doing. And, and I do think that if we move to a system like that, um, and I don't know how that would work at the SNA, I don't know, but I would consider at least looking at that um, and, and consider, because I know um, we have a lot of, uh, we have some folks who are particularly um, adamant about code, and, and I do think they would clarify how that's done and that we move forward. And we are looking into that. So. Yeah. I've uh, contacted a few of the different agencies um, one of them is Eden, the other is Energov, which is Miami Shores. Right. Uh, we have Intergraph, which is another city that's actually transitioning over to that from uh, Tiny Tim or something, a Tiny Turn. And, and for the audience to say, feel free to look at some of their sites and how they present it. it Intergov used to be the program here. All I'm saying is there is, there, if you look at some of the other software that's out there, it's a lot more detailed and it's a lot more specific and really shows what you're doing. Like a website available yeah. online? Yeah, and available. I was thinking for the building department as well with permits online, you might want to consider something like that as well so that we're starting to move in that more modernization. Yes. Yeah. Well, right Absolutely. now, what we're doing is, is to answer Jamie's question, I think, um, is contacting the other agencies to see what they're currently using and how no, they no, feel about it. Which one you mentioned with ECOM, and ECOM is what we used to use. Yeah, yeah, it was And Heidi probably. got rid of all of those and just brought in BSNA. And BSNA, unfortunately, was, yeah. they tried to tailor that for code, for building, for all of it. It does not work well for that. It's really financial. Masters, exactly. No, it's right. not conducive to what we do whatsoever. It still handicaps us, even though we've played with it and done what we can. So that is something that we're looking into, and that's going to be something that will come across your table as far as pricing for that whole module to see what we can do. It will end up covering what code does and what the does for the most part. So. Thank you very much. Sure. Any other questions? Thank you. <laughs> you guys know how, how much day it costs, so if you want to do a break for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, your reputation oh. precedes you. I shift my kids away, so I'm free all night. So I understand it happened to me last time. Okay, it's not a one we're zooming. Manager Manners, I'll pass it off to you for public works. I guess we're public works. Yeah, we're public works, yes. All right, so we, as you know, brought in David Hernandez last year, or earlier this year, as our new public works manager. He's doing a fantastic job on so many levels. He's getting a lot of the projects done that we need. Um, some of the ones that we budgeted for 19 um, are not complete yet, but they're in the works. Current. And um, he's just moving forward with great speed, so we'll kick off the budget and start going through that. Um, 
We've got arrays in here for data. Um, laborers, four. Okay. And this includes uh, one new hire. We had that budgeted for this year, didn't use it for this year. Um, we bought the lift instead. So remember too that when you look at these uh, laborers, there's some in the road cut, there's two in the road cut as well. So that would bring us up to six laborers um, and public works. So overtime, we're running high on that this year. Um, we sort of expected that. Um, but next year we anticipate it will be much less for the to down to to a or to a thousand dollars. Um, employee bonuses, we have those are contractual, um, one for each um, public works employee at five hundred dollars each. Um, we may need to if we had a sixth person there, we may need to raise that to three thousand. Um, By the Medicare, again, that's commensurate with the, the salaries, retirement contributions, health insurance, all of that. Well, actually, health insurance, that took a steep, well, no, it didn't, I'm sorry, never mind. Scratch that. Unreasonable. Yeah, workers comp, you know, it's commensurate. Um, then contract services, we have janitorial services, and we're paying for Janitorial service on all five buildings out of this budget. And so, for all four buildings, excuse me. And so, I mean, once again, we'll be just budgeting the same amount as last year, the $9,500. Uh, there's, we budgeted, excuse me, for a trap neuter release program for this year. We would like to, if we can't get that done between now and October, then we want to go ahead and budget for that again for 2020. Yes, for this, this is for this is for the band to come in. This is not for the trap neuter because that we have the experts sitting in the audience, so I'm going to tap it. That's, okay. You want to talk about tap neuter and cost? The, yeah, the, the trap neuter and release is, is free, but um, there had been a suggestion over the years that I think started with Commissioner Ross to bring the, the band. mobile in. Mm -hmm. It's actually the big bus that the county has. And when the animal services people were here, they presented that, and I think they gave you a breakdown of the cost for that. So that would be for people who live here to bring dogs and cats versus the trap, neuter, and release, which so is which is free, but we should still be doing because yeah. I just did some on eight with the trapper I know, and we've got 15 cats, including six kittens, but there's a bunch more kittens out now, and that's just a volunteer, so the county would as long as they have the soapbox here. The county would follow up on that for free if you talk to the folks who came out okay. um, and, and set it up, and you've got quite a few kittens now that are, that are running around that need to be fixed before there's a million more. Okay. Okay. So, so this should be changed the name of just so you Yeah, so we need to, yeah. Yeah, rather than name this the Trap Neuter Release Program, which is what we had it named last year. Who's paying um, yeah. County Spade. County Spade. Thank you for doing that. Thank you, sir. And all the traffic release you can do, let us know how we can support you. Thanks. Is there anything you need? Okay. All right, next page. Um, communication, fund allowance for the public works manager, Comcast, um, ATP mobility. We had that at 435 this year today. Um, we expect that being at zero next year. We're not using the APM ability. Oh, that was for the mm -hmm. that was for air parts Correct. for public works, and we don't okay. need that, so we're going to get rid of that. And the Comcast. Um, the only question I have is a general <coughs> question on Comcast throughout. Look at seeing what we can do to negotiate that contract a little more effectively. We will be looking at that. Okay. Yes, seriously next year. Okay. So, um, we're budgeting sort of at the same level as for this year, but okay. we are going to look at that and try and negotiate collectively because right now Comcast sort of provides service to each individual building separately. Um, we want them to, to look at the buildings as a whole. But, uh, but, I'm sorry, not, and not to take us backwards, but are we not line iteming commissioner phones under the commission section of the budget? We talked about that earlier today, and I, you, I forgot to put that in tonight, so okay. we should do that. Okay. So we'll go back to that. 
Utilities, so those are pretty standard. Water and sewer, again, pretty standard. No big changes there. Um, okay. Rentals and leases. Now, this is where I'm going to let data take over here. Okay. Um, to talk a little bit about how I started and where I'm at and what the changes that, that was. Um, you'll see later on we'll talk about, say, tree trim. What I've done is um, it, it was difficult for me to start negotiating something with the manager to see what I need prior to what I'm going to get. What do I mean by that? I meant that by me purchasing the Highland and getting approval recently from here at the body, I had to go back and say, okay, now that I'm not, I am going to get it. What am I going to get out? What am I, what, what, where am I going to save? Well, then I'm going to save for the budget, for the tree trimming budget, because now I'm going to do it in house. So when, when we go through this, and I'm going to explain a little bit more about the equipment, what I'm doing, the programs that I've started, please bear in mind that it started in between the existing budget. So I'm trying to fit in all the programs that I'm trying to get done and the stuff that I really need to move forward with public work. Saying said that, that you'll see that um, we thought about, at one time, adopting and leasing the high debt. But now we're going to purchase the high debt. So how, we're, 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 we're going to, there's going to be some changes in the last year. Uh, you know, we're going to do some changes for the budget in this year's budget. When I receive the high debt, and then I, I'm going to lower some of the expenses of basically trick trimming and other expenses. So, saying that, the first part that says the equipment, that's going to stay the same. The bottled water cooler is what we have in the, uh, at the, uh, we need water. <laughs> that's what we have over there. And it's the same thing, we have a cooler, not, not bottled water. <coughs> uh, the property insurance and liability. Um, I, I, I want to thank the chief because we also save money. How do we save money? The chief basically said, you're driving an, a, an admin car that the manager gave me. Well, guess what? Forget about a car. We're going to get one that's donated from, from Golden, and he got me the car. That's a, that's a cost saving instead of going out there and leasing another vehicle like we did with Code Force. You know, I, I just told the manager, I don't need a new vehicle. So by donating a, a vehicle to us, we're saving a lot of money, so I want to. I do want to thank the chief on having the connections of getting those going. Uh, the, the staying with the flood insurance, the proper oil, the autos is the same. We're just projecting a little bit more increase. Now, um, repair maintenance. Um, here's where I've looked at the budget a little bit much more carefully, from where it was to where I want to. I want to gear to. Um, when we met with parks and parkways, well, the log cabin, the landscaping, I'm going to have some money there again. I'm going to pass the one, uh, $1,500. Recreational landscaping for the rec center, there's $5,000. I'm going to keep that. The entrance signs for the installation of the landscaping, the, the welcome signs, when I was in Park and Parkways, we thought about installing the, the rest of the sign. As I came in, I reviewed most of the locations that they proposed was envisioned problem that we really couldn't install. Just, they can't install. So we decided in Parks and Parkways that we were going to install just one sign on, on 8th Avenue. So what I've done is reduced it from 11000 so I'm going to need $3,000 to just to install that. I haven't gotten it to it yet, but I will. Okay, bridge landscaping. Um, we've had some conversations with Parks and Parkways. I think the last meeting that we have, we're going to add some more. We're going to change and add some more landscaping and remove the uh, bush blacker uh, on Sixth Avenue. Beach creek. Beach creek. Sorry about that. The beach creek. So we're we're part of the landscaping. 
but we're working with Parks and Parkways on that. Uh, tree planting, we, 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 we talked to Parks and Parkways about planting about 10 trees in the right of way. Um, they're still working with nurseries to tag them. We're going uh, to do the installation. So it's a joint effort between us, Public Works, and Parks and Parkway. Again, the tree trimming is what I explained earlier. Obviously, it was 20000 and I'm going to save money because I'm going to have a lift. Okay. Uh, planting, it's going to stay the same. Um, one of the things that happened uh, that I had to push was on Northeast Sixth Avenue when I came in. There was we, we needed to go back and put the pentas and we needed to go back and put um, a lot of the uh, green ficuses that were gone. And it was just wasn't kept up correctly. Um, the irrigation also wasn't kept up correctly. So I moved. I, I, I used my city forces to to move that. So we're we're, we're okay there. Remove all the pines. We, I have not gotten to remove all those Australian pines, but we've identified uh, five of them, and we're going to move on that. Removing all the Australian pines, which go ahead. I just wanted to back up to the tree trimming since okay. that is a reduction. Yes, and I yes. also wanted to um, yeah. address something that I also want to address something that um, Mrs. Kuhl also mentioned with regard to whether or not we have things that need to be trimmed that we can't do in house. So with this reduction having the lift now, do we have a situation still where there are... No, we could do things in house. So everything can be taken We care could of do more house. things in house. Part of the tree treatment that I explained to you at the commission, and again, I want to thank you all for approving the lift, because that's going to save us money in the long run. It's going to save us a lot of money. Part of it is also the liability. Um, a lot of these limbs are falling, and we're able to start a tree maintenance program. So, yes, we will address that in-house. I'm trying to move things in, uh, in-house with city forces that we can do, that we can save money. So there will be a cost up, you know, up front, but we are really able to save money when we establish a maintenance program. I have a question regarding lines entrance um, where it says bridge landscaping um, and tree end capping. We put a lot of money into the bridge, but we have not been putting stuff on the interior. Um, which I know the commission at some point asked uh, the board to, to look at um, to see what we could do for some of our other meetings. I, I would like I would rather see that combined so you're not tied to something um, as the commission moves forward okay. to work through Parks and Parkway to uh, to see what we need um, and have that be of a more of a, a big fund uh, that you can then pick and choose as to what the priorities are if they change. I just think that's a that's a more it's a less limiting. Um, approach. Okay. If, if the commission concurs with that. Okay. We'll definitely, we'll definitely do that. And, and the, the other issue is with, it says removal of pines at $30,000. I know that's the actual piece as well. Because Each. But, but what if there's what if there's a rubber tree that you need to My point is that instead of calling it removal of pines, removal of, just make it more generic. I'm just trying to make sure that the language is such that it doesn't hem you in. Well, this is because of the abundance of Australian pines that we have and, and the danger specifically from them. That was why we set aside, we made this line item last year for removal of pines. Right. Um, for removal of other trees, that would go into the tree trimming budget. Well, the reason I'm thing. mentioning is you could have a ficus or a If you looked at what came down in Irma, mm -hmm. there were three main trees that came down in Irma. Um, uh, well, ficus. Ficus, rubber tree. Uh, uh, Australian, Australian pines. Australian pines. Uh, and uh, the black the olives came black. down, okay. and, and those are really some of the more significant damages. So I just wanted you to have some leeway, the storm season and so forth, to be able to use the funding as 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 needed. more needed and just in case more just broad. Wind, right, in case it's a wind event and you get a, uh, what if it's not a pine that, that that's got decay and creating issues, and it's a giant rubber tree on Northeast Fifth Avenue, for example. Okay, we'll make that That's my thought. I'm just thinking because the removal of the Australian pines is also something that's like prophylactic. It's it's preventing something, and I, I would just be afraid that I agree if something like catch rock happens and there's other trees, but I don't want to all of a sudden have no budget now for removing the Australian pines. It's still an issue moving forward if we want to prevent things. Right, but if you have a rubber tree with the same issue, or you have a different tree with a similar problem that's got termite rot. 
I just don't, I'm trying to come up with a way that allows them. Flexibility. They know, they know, they know what they have to do in the Australian Pines, that's a given. But if there was something else that came up, um, that was creating a problem with another tree. I just didn't want to tie the I hands mean, because there are other trees that are wrong. invasive or noxious tree removal yeah. and let the, the experts pick yeah. just a tightening. Yeah, I just want to show you So we're clear. I, 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 I usually, 99%, and I, this is to protect the village, is I will require and have Caesar that's moved and hire an arborist so we're clear on how bad that tree is. So in other words, we know that, for instance, when the tree fell down over here at the park, quickly they had fungus. It was disease. Strangler things. Or the, exactly. So before I even take that particular step, and I, and I at public works, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a preliminary cautionary step before we move forward and remove the tree. Okay, so we're clear. Because I know we have a lot of stranglers things that are creating that problem. We are the stranglers are trees are having a problem. The stranglers are, are becoming an issue here. Yep. When I was in the college board, we requested those to be removed yeah. back then, and they were. This is a little outline item that I I, I I I want you to understand the other side. Um, we have a we don't have a chipper. I don't know if you understand what a chipper is, but you know when you cut these logs and trees and. It will be, it'll be better, easier for us to have a chipper um, for the guys. I'm requesting that. I think that I'm going to need that for the next budget year. And I also need another stag, another lawnmower. The lawnmower that we have today is, it's getting old. I think it's what, 2004? Four. Four. 2004. We're in 2019. And I'm going to tell you what's going on so I'm clear. I've already talked to them. So... This, this is why this is a budget is important. I don't want to spend money at, at Joe, Joe Blair's shop every, every month. And then and we got to change the, the, the cables, you know, they got to, you know, repair and maintenance of, of older vehicles is it's a nightmare. It's just a waste of time and money. So I want you to understand warranty? that. Is there warranty in here? Don't, if, when I move forward, I'm not obviously, if, if it's approved, go ahead. You don't have enough space to put those two items into this budget now? Why wait to No, I'm requesting it. Right here. Right here. I'm requesting it. That's that's what I'm doing. Okay. Well what I'm well, I want you to see that my old adopted budget was four thousand. I'm requesting it twenty. So it's not that I just want to make sure that I need it. So that's why both saying. items that are, are very much needed. This particular mower I know is spending way too much time in the shop. Too much time in the shop. And so it's it's served its purpose and it's done us well for 15 years. But you know, it's time same to thing. It. Same thing as lift. This would save money in the long run. Right. It's steam powered. It's so old. Yeah. Um, again, uh, any other questions? On, on, on kind of, okay. Uh, building. We, we're going to keep the same vehicle bedding. Uh, we don't. We're not going to. I don't think we already done enough to the to the Dodge. Uh, Ram that we don't need anything. I wanted to put at least contingencies for the thought process that the mayor just kind of said. I ran around going crazy trying to, you know, what, what, if something happens, I, I need to have a little bit of you know, moving, shaking to see what I, if I need an emergency, another tree that falls down. And, and you think that's enough? Right, that's I, I, it, yes, and if I need more money, I'll come back to you guys. You know, I, I and I also want to say thank you to Paul. He's we we discuss a lot of this because I, I want to have a little bit of wiggle room, and I think that that um, I don't want to ask for money that I don't need. But if I do need it, I'll definitely go to the commission and ask, and I'll explain the, the thought process of why if we need to change. It. Um, so I, I was going to say real quick, did, did we come to a consensus about the removal of pines, lime down? Yeah, I made a note to, to alter that description to add noxious or invasive. Yeah. Noxious or invasive. 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 Noxious or inv
my worry is I know that the upstream lines is an issue. Yeah, it's, just it's, it's been an issue for years. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I just don't want it to. And I think for historically, it's been an issue for years, and for years, you know, there hasn't been money put aside, but then there's money put aside, but then the pines still stay. Well, that'll make a big night. Why, well, why hasn't it happened? I'm sorry. Well, what happened was there was some. question, but why, why hasn't it happened? I remember what, last year at the budget meeting, it was the same thing. Just what? I'll explain to you yeah, why. Yeah, I'm just. I'm transparent. When I came in my first Parks and Parkway meeting was brought up, they mentioned 17 of them. When I went out to get bids, okay, each each Australian pine was about six thousand dollars, six sixty-five hundred. And then I said to the manager, I think we're a little short on what we budget. And uh, then what I've done is that I tried, I went back to Parks and Parkways. I told them, here's the issue. Uh, Barbara recognized, and what we decided is, let's get an arborist so we can identify the worst ones and try to stay within that budget. And we marked, we marked it, and I'm pretty much ready to go on that. It's just that. How many do you have now that are marked? That are we we marked four. four. Four and one just came up, so I have another one. So just, just so you might have to budget for this year for those three. Well, and that's remember last year when we were when we budgeted the thirty thousand for it. Um, we said that was we knew that was not going to be enough to take care of all of them, yeah. but that was the start, and that's why we're budgeting thirty four to get next year. You know, and we'll probably budget another thirty yeah, for the, the year only, after that. Yeah, the only reason, and I know, I think I think it's the <coughs> commission has made clear that they want the pines as being a priority. The only reason I mentioned to, to be a little bit broader is you may find yourself with one of those other very problematic trees mm -hmm. that are either, either causing water pipe issues, um, gas sure. line issues. Yeah. I just want to give them a little bit of flexibility so they don't have to come back and say, well, we did this because. That's all. And, and noxious or troublesome trees, I think, takes care of that. But I do think everybody concurs here that the pines are by far in this village one of the greatest issues we have. Ross would like to say something. I got a question for David. Yeah. Uh, is the uh, equipment that you uh, we need to replace, is there a salvage value to it? Is it going to need value at all? No. Yeah. I don't know about 2004 lawnmower. Yeah, right. I don't, I don't think, think so. Right. Okay. Just curious. Huh? 20. Yeah. 20 bucks. Yeah. Um, Just had to throw it out there. <laughs> With the, I know you gave wanting to get the lift, and I think you're going to get a lot of use out of it. But I still think there are limbs that are very high that need to be done professionally. I think the liability, our men are not tree trimmers. There is a dangerous thing going up with a chainsaw. And, and I worry about cutting the budget down to 6000 for the tree trimming. Because that's where it, it could cover a tree that is needs to come down that that could be a, a, a big item. It it the the, the six thousand if I can't and my guys can't I can hire and get a, 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 let's say trees gone wall or somebody right. to go out there and do it. I just think but I just think that we can start a tree maintenance uh, program. And uh, definitely you okay. could. But the thing is like you just had the tree that came down and it was how much? That was 5000 5000 So, you know, that's the kind of thing that you're going to have to hire somebody. And that, it just seems like you may be cutting it close, leaving yourself only 6000 There, than, than I, there are other, like, again, if at the beginning, I, I, I don't know if you have this, but no. I'm, I'm, <coughs> I'm trying to save some money no, here. I'm, try, I'm going to be no. over because let me explain to you something I haven't gotten to. I gotta also add money, um, drains. Uh, the, the, I'm trying to come with you. But um, again, like I said, and I told them, if I really need more money, I'm gonna be completely honest, and I'm gonna be, and I'm gonna go back to the commission. You know, if if, 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 if I see the need, be. but I, I think I'm I'm very comfortable with this. Yeah, we also have a 55 member contingency in here, so that just a, well, with, with the attorney. When the contingency didn't cover it, 
you needed an ordinance which cost us money. Maybe it would be pay to put a little more in the contingency. Well, we didn't, say no, have didn't, we didn't have a contingency in that line item for the attorney. We have a contingency in this line item specifically for the public work. Oh, oh, oh. And th so that contingency of 5500 can't be used for the attorney or anything like that. No, I realize uh, that. I'm just saying if you need more than 5500 which you could, um, then you have to do something else. All right, I just wanted to Um, next, uh, 49 points. Are other checks storm prep, barricades, safety cones, uh, storm equipment. If we left costs out of those items because of the agility of what he needs at that time, given the nature of an event, that we don't know, but it's a placeholder for preparatory those days before a warning or threat. And isn't this also, is this also for uh, events when you need to barricade off, such as Halloween and other yeah. events? Yeah, we, we the, the, the barrack, I, I got some estimates for that, and, we're, you know, uh, that covered, all this covers it. So can we... That's under a different section, though, isn't it? The, the cover event costs that are in the rec center. The, that's center. in the rec center. So yeah, the barricades are in the rec center? That's on the okay. rec This yeah. is just that, that three days before this storm, is, uh, he's got to do ABC. I need to close street off, okay. water's streets flooded. Can't drive through the streets. I need to barricade the streets. It's a bit of a placeholder, hopefully, but you can see they spent nine thousand dollars this year yep. covering the preparatory costs for Irma, so we're just they're finishing that. Right. Um, what the next one? Operating supplies. I'm going from six hundred to ten thousand. Okay. Why? Why am I doing this? Because after after meeting with what Parks and Park Place ideas. Um, The park, the irrigation of the park, um, I, I, they wanted also put some a type of irrigation at the butterfly line. When I started realizing the cost to outsource it is ridiculous. And I couldn't see myself spending forty, fifty thousand dollars outsourcing, you know. So my guys, I, I round them up and I asked them, hey, listen, how do we save money? It's simple. We'll save money by, let's do it in-house. So, what I'm adding with pipes and fittings and others is PVC pipe, stuff that I can use to actually, you know, when the irrigation system breaks at the, uh, and we need to fix something over there at the park, it's much easier, instead of me outsourcing it. So, I wanted to increase that so we could do more in-house and out-house. Um, the rest is, this, uh, we don't need a pallet truck, well, the small tools stays the same. Um, the uniforms, I can't do anything about that. You might have to go up one if you're gonna have another employee. The, the based on five employees. Yeah, we, don't you wanna, if you're gonna plan, if you've got your budget. Yeah, we, we included that for, that's the five employees. David doesn't wear a uniform. Oh, I'm so sorry. You make him buy his own clothes. Okay. <laughs> that's what my problem is. <laughs> um, the fuel, um, we we moved it to the police. It, it was there already. We just yeah. got we just went Janitor supplies are going to stay the same. Dues and memberships same. Education and training. Again, Barbara asked a good question. The union is also going to help us uh, train the guys. I'm I'm setting up a meeting with them to see how we can start. You know, because they. They give us a lot of training for free. So this is for the lift. For the lift and other, other stuff that they that have. Um, the the generator. Um, I remember at the beginning your wish list was if we could do you know sewer lines and water lines and your second was the generator. Well, you know I know that you you went to the state and begged them. <coughs> Um, we're going to we're gonna try to get a grant. We're going to push for a grant. We're going to figure something out. Paul mentioned today that he's going to help us on that. Yeah, I think uh, it would be an excellent idea for the, the mayor to write a letter to the Green Corridor, which you remember is the Postal Corridor, yep. and ask them if they can help you. I have a really strong feeling that I can help you. Thank you. We'll, we'll discuss that, and I'll be happy to do that. It's worth the time to write a letter. 
Well, and and one of one thing that I would like to add and see what happens, but um, I just re I went up with Tico. Uh, Tico just gave me a, a, an estimate. I'm bringing in the line in. Um, that's going to come. It came out to about eight thousand um, dollars. I received that estimate. And I met with them last week, and uh, that's not. It will be an added eight thousand plus whatever we can get the grant. So we'll try to put all that together. Plus, you also have to wire up the whole system to receive it. Right. Yeah. That's a separate cost from just the generator. Right. Um. That's it. Thank you. Ask me of anything you want. I'm open. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry for the confusion, but you and the chief presented it together, and it wasn't in the chief's budget. And I don't see it in your budget. The traffic, the speed calming pilot program that was supposed to be in a couple different areas, and then ideally to be expanded. I don't see costs allocated for that. Anywhere. That'll be in the CIPT budget, or is it? Road no, it's, road it's, it's moving road like it, within this meeting. No, no, no. That's in the road from okay. road. We'll get to that. <laughs> okay. No, no. Every time I was chief, you said public works before. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right, because I'm still looking for it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Road fund budget. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Ross again would like to say something. Can Can you please wait and then? I got a question on one question for David. Can you wait? Yeah. Please wait. Can you wait? Her question is addressed. Yeah. Can wait, of course. Are we looking in? Actually, looking to see if there's a road zone. Okay. And also, my question is: Weren't you going to buy some of the this year's budget? I'm sorry. The, the grant we have we applied for the, the is it still available the, no. the hazard mitigation we, grant? No, we missed it. Um, we missed the deadline on it. It's a very large complex grant and we just didn't have the staff. I know that we started we started to look at it but they couldn't. Okay. So the, that is available for next year, but it's about this time next year, so it's yeah. still, and it's not a guarantee. It's a very expensive grant. And that's right. not, I like to see I'm happy to work on that. But it's not a, it's not a small. The instructions were 30 pages, I think that helps. Okay. That's about normal for your, for your federal summary. Like, mm, yeah, not yeah. for you, that's like, yeah, that's, not, that's a small that grant. Sure. <laughs> so do we want to go to the road effort? Yeah, no, I just, I don't see it anywhere. Okay, okay before we do done. that, Mr. Let's Ross. just put a pin in it. Let's just not forget that that's an important okay. thing. Mr. Ross, you had a question? No, that's, Mr. Yeah, it's, uh, someone asked me, who asked David, um, a lightning a detection system, what does what something like that cost? Is it something we want to consider for the RX center? Lightning? Yeah, lightning detection Not system. Like. Hmm? Got well, Shores has it. Okay, I'll just, just a question. It, no, I'll just, I'll just, I have no idea what something like that costs. I, I, know, I, like, I know a suppressor, good. just the cost of the unit, commercial. It can be like five gram, but that's a suppression. That's not a. That's not the same. <coughs> so, yeah. Um, the, yeah. The alarm that alerts people thirty minutes right. before. Right. Right. That's what they have at the shores. Yeah. It's got to be probably fifteen-ish, but I don't know for sure. I, okay. I could definitely look into it. Go ahead, Dave. So I, I still like a, like a dog with a bone. I didn't see anything for the drains in there. We're not Is that because that's under CIT. CIT. Okay. Thank you. That's okay. We're going to work with Just asking before he leaves. Before I leave. Dave touches every department. So he does. Okay, so next. Okay, right, Tom. Um, one of the things that we noticed this year is that actually with the local option gas tax, that we had to reduce revenue in that. And that part of that is gas prices going down and, of course, gas sales reducing now as cars get more and more energy efficient. Um, so that's something that we're going to have to be aware of last year. We've adjusted our revenue um, downward, I believe, on that one, so that we can put straight on that gas kind of increase. We hope it's true. The state revenue sharing is down a little bit, 5,000 or so projected. So if, if all these lines are either dead flat or you find that that contributes to the road fund, so what's happened is your road fund uh, balance is already off without even spending money. So now you've got sort of an alternate plan versus your other departments, which are based on other revenue sources uh, that are slightly increasing. So you're, you're in a little bit of a pickle to add a project to directly into this line, um, if any um, The FDOT median maintenance, that's FDOT pays us to maintain the median on 6th Avenue. It's and, and I do want to make a comment on that. Yes. I do want to make a comment on that. $1,400 is ridiculous what we're getting from the DOT. That's ridiculous. 
So I, it, it, it's it, it, that's where God. I wish I was here because I would have I would have told DLT, "Are you kidding me? You're going to give me more money if, we, if we're going to take over an area." So in the future, if we're going to take over an area for maintenance, especially how they maintain Sixth Avenue, that they didn't. It took me six months to get the lights back start to get the, the street lights up. Can you it, put the it, cost of what we spent? And because I know um, Mr. Casario would, would be happy to champion that for us and put down the cost of what we actually have spent, which is what they're getting. It's for you. Yeah, and, and maybe that would be a. Uh, and and I just wanted to bring it to the commission's attention that. It's peanuts to what we have to actually do to try to keep, and then on top of that, recently we just had an accident and they, they ran, they mowed over my, some of my pants. And so it's, it is ridiculous that the amount of this amount of David's pants. Uh, David's pants. Uh, David's pants. Continue. Continue. No, I, I've watched somebody run right over the meeting. They just ran right over and kicked them. Okay. Can we have a transfer in from the sanitation fund? Um, again, that's pretty much the same as it was last year. The $24,399 uh, regular salaries. Now here we have two salaries of our public works employees that come out of road. And so that, that will be with their adjusted salaries and so forth. And adopted 29, they'll be at the agreed upon collectively bargained raises and that will take them to 67. Yeah, actually, you reminded me of something we didn't talk about earlier. Just, just for public record point in the audience, uh, Public Works did have its budget bargaining agreement adjusted. We've absorbed in this budget 2019 the retroactive pay that was uh, their contract was well after the year, so we had to go back two years and correct that pay. That's to cover that. Cover. Okay. Over time, we put in $1,000 there for the budget overtime. We're going to keep that at a minimum. Um, employee bonuses, again, two employees at $500 each. That would be $1,000. And FICA like Medicare retirement contributions, all those are free. Self explanatory, health insurance, workers' comp, again, pretty much the same. Uh, communications, fund allowance, one employee at, at $40 a month. And, so, and then um, rentals and leases, we have the John Deere tractor, and in 2019 we had adopted the budget for proposed 2020, there's zero, I believe. Paid that off now. Okay. And so, from that perspective, that's a good one. Um, autos, we have property and liability shown on two autos. Um, that's probably... Yeah, because you had some in the other department, too. I was trying to... We're trying to okay. Yeah. You might want to look at that just to see and verify. The, the two Dodges. I think so. Uh, but uh, we, we talked to them. Was there any, you could identify just so we know. It's, it's hard to go back and forth to know. Which, which, like, which just like you do with the police department, if you could put the vehicles in here, I think that would be clear for the public as well. Well, we'll that. Um, repairs and maintenance, uh, equipment, we still, same as last year, 2200 and the vehicles, 1550 sidewalks, 2500 so that's all pretty standard there. Um, operating supplies, standard. yeah, it's standard uniforms, fuel, road materials, that sort of thing. Uh, education and training. We had 200 last year. Um, we proposed 200 for next year. David, I have a question for you. We spent 250 year to date. Do we need to increase that for education and training? Yeah, we should. Yeah, because uh, we should go to 300. Because it, um, you guys need to just be here with the education. Okay, we, we need to go to 300 now, please. All right. Takes us right into CITT. I'm going to say so. The, the, just to be clear, the, the speed humps 
We're purchasing almost all of that this year, correct? Yes. This year's budget? Okay, let's discuss that. Yeah, let's, let's discuss that clearly. Clearly. Uh, because it's a pilot program, because it wasn't budgeted in, the, in, the, in this year's budget, okay, one of my, 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 my the, the thought process is I'm able to put in, and you gave me the go ahead, so we're going to put in the first speed hump. Uh, that's, again, that the first hump is going to go in the location of uh, 11603 Northeast 11. Once I do the installation, I'm going to have about 45 to 60 days. I want to see how the people react. I want to see how, how we move forward. Do we need to adjust it? Do we need to move it uh, further? It is a pilot program. And I gotta put, I'll put the first in. Moving forward, I want to be clear. Um, I'm trying to, I'm working now with two options. Or I get it from the road, from the road fund, or I get it from CITT fund. Okay? I am having discussions with CITT at the county. I'm trying to swiggle to see if I'm able to get what projects can I get with CITT. Okay, so we're clear. And I'm also trying because and I want to be clear that um, there's been a lot of other idea projects that I, I'm able to maybe push through CITT. But in this particular case, the first hump, we're going to pay for the road. For the, the road, which is the first location. I'm going to have a little bit more clarity maybe in the second budget, but I'm having discussions with the manager on how we're going to move forward because we were not budgeting for the, for the speed cushions mm -hmm. in 2019. Okay? So I want to be clear. Well, and maybe for what we do is actually not use road fund because we know we, we're experiencing a reduced We're well, reducing that. There's other complexities in using CIPT funds for this. So why don't we just put the budget it in the public works budget for 2020. You do the pilot program that by the time that gets that's installed. A, that's a very good idea, that's right. That's a good idea. So we could have for the for the so we could go back to the public works budget and add a line item so we're clear. Each 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 location, we're looking at about 20 five, twenty six, twenty two hundred. You know, what do I mean by that? The actual speed hump itself is about 15, 1800, but I have to add the signs, the traffic delineators, all the stuff that's going to go into it. So you're looking at, I'm going to give you a ballpark thumbprint. You're looking at each location somewhere around 23, 26, 22. Well, yes. Nine locations. There were nine. In, in nine pilot locations. Okay. Can, can you, I mean, ideally, if it could come out of Rosa CITT, it's a better deal for the taxpayer. So ideally, I'd like to see what we could do based upon the projects that some of them introduced and where it might be. I just, I, I know the road funds been reduced a bit, but it, it, I just, if we can possibly put it in where it's less. Um, and we looked at that today. We looked at the, the, the road fund. Um, and CITT, right by is extremely tight. We really can't get it out of here. <coughs> CITT has other complications with it that would make it difficult to, to get it through that. Okay. So I think our best choice is to move it to public work. I'd rather, I'd rather be safe. <coughs> I'm sorry. I'd rather move it to the 2020 budget and public works. Okay. As a line item. Next year, 102,000 for transportation and 25,000 
601 for uh, the transit portion of it. Um, you've got a little bit of income there, a thousand bucks. Um, part of that will be used for street lighting. We've got 25,000 adopted for street lighting in 2019. I, we've spent about 16,000 of that, and we're going to take that up to 25,000 for next year, or we're moving to keeping it at 25,000 for next year. And that just pays for all the street lighting throughout the village, the, primarily the electric for that. You know, this um, just reminded me, have we heard anything else from FPO about yeah. that pilot program? That's yeah. a great question. Uh, I have an answer to you. Yes. Uh, I sent an email today. I just got a response earlier today. Uh, they, they are telling me that uh, anywhere between September and October, they got to engineer it. They got to send it to engineering. They gotta, so I just got an email today, and I copied the... Uh, Adelis and uh, Frank from FPL, the gentleman that's, that's spearheading it, Orlando Carr, and they responded by somewhere between September and October. Remember that this, remember that, <coughs> that project's going to be on 10th Avenue, so we're clear. Okay, and we're 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 modifying 10 street lights. And that will be our pilot program. And it's the pilot if LED program. program. Yeah. If we We'll see how it looks on 10th Avenue if... Well, they're supposed to bring the samples in the next? No. They're going to put they're in... They're going to put in samples of the lights. That's so it. Different lights, different, lights, different, different lights. poles. Um, on 10 poles on 10th Avenue. And then we'll be able to take a look at them and see what it and is. And then we're going to be able to... It, which... Right. So are we going to get the 3,000 KV or, uh, or the 3,000 KV or the 4,000? More than likely, I'm... I, I'm looking at probably the 3,000 of the ones that are going to choose because it's not as a... And what about, oh, you know, what about the quality of the lighting? I know that there's different... That's, they have other options other than just some of the more bright you know, yellowish lights. They have more of a... Right, the, they have the white... Right. That's the one that we're that's putting in. Okay. That's the one that we're putting in. But they have two... Okay, let's go back to what, what, so I can explain so you understand. You have the high pressure sodium vapor, and you would have 100, 150 watt, 200 watt. The 3000 is much lighter, kind of like similar to the one, uh, 130 watt or 120 watt. And then the, the, four, the 4000 is much more intense, it would be like almost 200 watts, which is much more light. So we, we, we discussed that we, had, we wanted maybe the light, you know. The more not as put out light. Yeah, subtle light as opposed to. It's more the subtle light. And they have a more of a yellow option versus a white, bright. Right. And we're, going, we're trying to get, we're going with the white. We're going to try out the white light and see because that, that has a lot of benefits to it as far as its ability at night, um, specifically as far as discerning colors, that sort of thing for please. Um, so that's helpful as well. Um, if it's, if it's, if once we do the pilot, we see that nobody wants it, we'll talk to them about it. Correct. We'll know. And that's why it's a pilot. Warm lights, which is a, the more of a yellow tint. Do those LEDs have the shielding? I know there's, because I know some, some street lights, people complain about the light coming into the house. Well, it, that's complaining about spillage. Right. Because before you have, what we have here is um, open bottom. Mm -hmm. These are just, they're more direction, so they don't spill. Okay. So the, the photometrics are, are, are much better on the LED, and they're much energy efficient. We'll, we'll say definitely, if we do go, we're going to say that there's money and energy on the electric bill, for sure. Yeah, I just thought about that because when I saw a street lighting, I was like, no way, if you're supposed to be coming by here. No, they, I, I just got them, they just told me oh, that good. the pilot program, they, by the time it'll be September, I'm on it. The transportation projects, um, we put aside $250,000 this year. Uh, we were going to use that as a match if we got the state funding uh, to redo roads. Um, we still have that. I just put it back in the same position for next year. Correct. Um, we'll take direction from the commission on whether you want to start spending that and repaving a road here or a road there or save it for a match. Um, that will be up to you guys. Um, new storm drains, David Raymond. And, um, <laughs> I, and we adopted 2019, 
And I it didn't have fifty thousand it wasn't enough to 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 work on this project. Um so I'm asking for thirty five. Okay? Now I I think I could I could complete his and I can see what other other ideas like Mac that they brought about. I gotta I gotta get more in depth into it. Right? You need to look at where the worst cases are and go. Correct. David's definitely. Know definitely, David's, David's, but yeah. Okay. And and Mac brought in. I met with him. His case is uh you know a little bit similar. Not it's not similar to his, but he has an area that the water pitches into to to his property and. And the edge of asphalt, so I, I got to get more in depth of that. But I, I wanted to increase that budget so I could make sure that we get it done. Okay. okay. We also have an ability to assess, I know, per street as well, because I know the couple of previous commissions ago they put together an assessment so we can do stormwater assessments locally if we have to. If we if, if we have, have to assess the property, it does it does put it back on the taxpayer. You know, I understand. So that that's something that the taxpayer would get a they might get it. A push comes to show. If we have to go that route, it is what it is. And it depends on, on the situation, what they want. But, yes, I do understand. But I do know there is money for drainage and stormwater stuff at the state. So that may be another something we can look at to get a larger yeah. amount. Because there is a lot of, that is one of the things that they were supporting. And also one other topic. I understand new, new storm drains, but as far as the maintenance of the storm drains, Excellent question. Yes, I know. Uh, we have um, uh, last month. Um, I went ahead and, and cleaned out. I, I contracted uh, Enviroways and I uh, cleaned out about ten or twelve catch basins. Um, each catch basin came out to about two hundred dollars for cleaning. Um, but. But how I'm working with them is they come out, we, you know, public works. We open up the grate, I look at it, make sure if it's clean, move on, but whatever, you know. So when David Raymond brought the first original issue to clean the drains, I went ahead and just inspected all the drains, and there was like 10 or 12 drains that we need. Do you need a budget for that? We, I, I would like to have a line item to clean drains um, as needed, and you're looking at two hundred dollars per drain. And I think that if I if I'm able to clean those drains every year, um, just I could do it once a year. I'll, I'll be okay. But I, I I would like to come back and give you a, a better. Uh, could you put it some fine? Yes. Yeah. 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 I need to I, I, I double check, man. Yeah. Double check. I want to double check. Yeah, you always want I think you can. Let me see if I can answer that. It's crafted very finely. But based on these allocations, there's nothing left for the pathway project we've been talking about. Oh, no, that's coming up. It's not in here, but it's coming up. That's under transit, because that has to be for that. We had bus shelters there. We have zero of them. But I was about to bring up the. Oh, it just says bus shelters. Yeah. And which bus, bus shelters have we looked into bus shelters that have signage like either powered solar panels so that we can put message boards on the bus shelters? That's why I'm trying to meet with them so we can have <coughs> what projects I'm able to really move forward and see. Um, and as soon as he gets all our description on that, we'll. We'll add to the budget. Remember, CITT has a, a lot more funds than this in you know, reserve by itself. So that one we can move it in easily. I think we have just we, we also had former Commissioner Harvey was mentioned about with CIT funds. How much well first of all we have the CIT funds that we we can use because he was talking about almost like the sidewalks on six Avenue, the blinking, you know, the blinking lights as people cross the street. You're talking about um, Crossing, uh, yeah. pedestrian crossing. Yes. That would have to be done with F dot, and F dot is not approved that way. That's not our road. Not, you know, I know we it's not that road. Um, what we're doing, and, and Harvey and I worked together on this yeah. when he was commissioner, commissioner Bill. Right. Um, we've met with F dot. Um, we've got F dot, dot to agree to put sidewalks on either side um, of 6th Avenue. The reasoning for that, they did the, the pedestrian traffic study. And to 
see if we do crosswalks. And they came back and said, well, no one walks down 6th Avenue. No one's crossing the street. Well, oh, because it's a death trap for them to do that. <laughs> yes. you know? And they are. So, They're just hanging out in those wonderful meetings that you spent all that money trying to fix up. Exactly. And so, you know, this is the step one is to get the sidewalks in, which David is working closely with EPTO on now, and getting the proper lighting in. Once we have that, then people will start walking on those sidewalks. Then we do another study. We'll start looking where we put the crosswalks in. That won't be for 2020. Um, that will be after the, uh, the work is done. So, but yes, it's, it's a good idea. And we've got shelters over where people are waiting for buses. The, the, let me just brief you a little bit. Um, Can I, before you do that, I just want to make a comment generally. We as a commission decided on certain projects. It's not They're not in here. We as a group of the commission decided on certain projects we are prioritized for legislative. And, and one of them was the Pathways project. It's not in here. I know. I just mentioned that to Commissioner Wise because she was looking at it. And we were talking to her actually yesterday. <coughs> we had um, looked at the, during the pathway, the uh, sidewalk. <coughs> Excuse me. And to use the some of the transit funds, uh, transit funds are, have to be used specifically for connectivity, um, either with a trolley system or something like that, or the sidewalks assuming they connect to a bus stop. <coughs> so we're looking at running sidewalks down 113th Street to connect him to here from the bus stop on 113th Street, connect him to the rec center. Um, we had an arborist come and look at that, and see if we could do that, if it would damage the trees, what sort of thing we need to do there. And, and there's a lot of complications there. Um, in talking with Commissioner Wise yesterday, she mentioned, well, you know, in areas where there's tree roots, that sort of thing, perhaps we, you know, go from sidewalk to wood or another material, do like more of a decking over those areas. It would all have to be ADA compliant and so forth. But I think that would be, you know, a great way to complete that, that sidewalk to give us an interesting pathway, you know, that actually provides that connectivity to utilize these funds. And it also makes it easier for people to get to the rec center and that. And ultimately, I'd like to do another one that goes up to the north end of 6th Avenue for the other bus stop. So we have to so protect all those road. trees. We can achieve the pathways that we've <coughs> been asking for. Um, and we can add a, a charming feature to the village. So it's not just a, like a cement sidewalk going down the middle of our medians, but rather, you know, we have it paved to a certain extent. And then it, it just comes up in a little wood bridge around the roots of the tree, and then it continues. Yeah, my, my only point was, and it's not here. <laughs> well, and that's because we talked about this yesterday, we don't know the pricing on sidewalk at this point to put there. David, I think you know you know at least you have a, a rough idea of what the, the paving project would cost. That was something you looked into a while ago. I, I feel like you spoke to me about those numbers and said... 140? Um, 140? No, 150, My only point was, I just want to make sure and I apologize because I want to get interrupt from Vice Mayor. But I wanted to make sure that when we're talking about bus shelters or other things, I just want to make sure that the projects that we had already agreed to would be the priority projects that are in here and not once we had not. Or that would be the past. The, 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 the answer is um, the CITT funds are very specific. specific. You get your tired. And if you don't use those funds exactly what they're saying, you're gonna, they're going to come back, they're going to audit you, and guess what? They're going to pull that money back out of you. I guarantee you that. Which was why we called and spoke to CITT and described the project. Correct. So what I want, and now what I'm fund. trying to do is set, I just told the manager, we're, I'm trying to set up another meeting. Because there's a gentleman now by the name of Bettencourt, which is the main... I are Bettencourt. So, I, I, he started maybe a couple of months ago. I, I'm trying to set up a meeting so I get all the the, the yes and no's. So I don't go, it's like when I come back, I don't get do And actually, I attended the CITT manager's meeting last week. Okay. And so I've got some information at the office for you. I haven't had a chance to get to you yet. Okay. But from a budget standpoint, uh, you're, you have a fund. 
which the budget is kind of a weird thing because it's really not the fund. It's, a, it's an amount you earmark of that balance fund and you put in your budget. It's, it's a bit of paperwork only. You have uh, what, almost $150,000 in the transit portion and you have uh, 615000 in, in the road portion. You, know, you don't have projects for that. So whatever you want, I can, we can do a symbolic line item. And, and no, I think it's more than symbolic. Out. I think it's an indication to the residents that we're going to act on the things that we voted on and said we would act on. Yeah, so I, I'll take direction, and we can certainly reflect it as you described and, and, and accomplish that part of it. And if it can't be done, it's good. Yeah, I, it's just there's been no specific number to put in there, but if you wanted to, if somebody tells me a number, I can just have that reflect. Is there a time frame that we have to use that fund? Yeah, you will start to sunset some of the funds, um, you know, and it's the oldest deposits go first. Is why are we using it? It's hard. It's, that's simply put, it's hard to, to actually spend those funds without losing, having them taken right back. So there, there's risk to using those funds. You have to be very, very cautious and very specific with those. Um, Dave, do you have a time to start? How much do we have in the transit portion of the time? 142000 as of May 31st. So let's put $140,000. Yeah, we can put it all, all show there. it there as a line item of projects. Just that, you know, I don't mean you can make, you can make it so that project or other approved. You can spend at or other approved in case that it can't be approved. Okay. So that way, that way we know that the intention is to act on it and spend the funds. Okay. Is that, is that agreeable? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll make that adjustment for your next year. Question? Yes, sir. Um, when you're doing the idea of the pathways, don't you have to connect transportation point to transportation yes. point? So you'd have to come up with, if we're going to do it from the rec center, where there's something dropping off at the rec center, which yeah. you can do, right? Yeah, we charge we, we that. So it's from the southernmost bus stop around 100. It's just north and of 113. It's just north of oh, almost 114. So 113th to the rec center to the drop off, back north to the bus stop at 119. So it's just it's like a U that connects the two bus stops. You have to drop the off rec the rec center. center. In the middle. That's yeah. what I'm asking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because that's we're right now we don't have that. We have to have something. Yeah. Right. right. All right. All right. Who do we do next? Sanitation or are we doing? Oh, okay. Sanitation. Can we? Sanitation. It's done. It's done. We okay. did that already. Okay. Yeah. Now it's park center. Yeah. We wanted to see how long we did that. Uh, you get the award for staying the longest. We apologize to you. Just move it quick. Just a number of Thank you, Mr. Hernandez. No, thank you. My pleasure, sir. Thank and you. Yes, sir. Mr. Yes, sir. 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 Essentially, uh, it's full-time salaries. We're going to get a piece of a bit of a raise here, and so, so that will help. Um, the we've got two part-timers, and we're going to give them each a three percent raise. Um, they've both been here for a few years now and haven't received a raise, so we can, we can help them out there. Um, we have a three thousand dollar seasonal um, employee that we adopted in 2019. We'll carry that over to 2020. FICA, retirement, workers' comp, health insurance, all of that's commensurate. I think the return contributions, I think they have a special in there. Oh my yes. God. That's, that's the reason. <laughs> 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 uh, I see that retired today. Yeah, for right. As you can see, the adopted budget was 6580 in 2019, and the proposed was 228000 I want to so I think retire for you. <laughs> I know. I'm going to work in the rec center now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and here's an invitation to use this retirement party. <laughs> <laughs> we'll check that. See Where's he going? Where that number was supposed to land. Yeah, I think that was the Okay. It'll probably be closer to nice six or five eight years. So my fellow work coming, isn't that good? I don't think the police are working. Yeah, that's what's in the yeah.
on the, the item shows on the, it's on the schedule is 67. Yeah. 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 It's just this worksheet uh, formula looks broken.
We haven't given it to them this year. Okay, well, what I'm saying is if you take it out of that budget, okay, and move it over here, that'll save some of that. Maybe, or use it to create real senior programming for our seniors. Because we have lost, a tr even in the last month, we have lost a tremendous amount of folks that are older, that, have just, that are deceased. And, and I've had uh, at least one resident who is really active, I'm sure you know, who, who has specifically asked us to increase programs. And they bring me over the, up in the North Miami Beach, you know, thing. See, they have all this, how can we do and, and I know it's troublesome to get them, but maybe we can find some way to reach out to some of our elderly and also bring them in the fold for health reasons and stuff. Well, Mayor, and then, uh, let me, I, I agree with you. Because you and I have been talking about this for a while. I know, and, and I love that idea. Um, it would have to be, most likely, at least for the first year, a subsidized type program mm -hmm. until we have enough seniors coming to it to make it profitable for whoever's running it. If, if we outsource it or if we do it in house, then we'll be subsidized. I, I don't mind spending a little money out of our budget for our seniors. They're a large part, part, part of our community, and I think they're the most underserved part of our community. And I would really like to see us do better in that area. And I think that $2,500, I would rather see you go to the rec center and let me work on senior, whatever you need to do for senior. Yeah, because that gives you the option to then pay for an instructor to host those classes instead of having to charge our senior residents for classes. I mean, we had the Silver Sneakers program that lasted almost two and a half months before they pulled it on us because we just couldn't keep the numbers. And sometimes it takes four months just to get the word completely set, circulated throughout the village. Um, when you bring in your own instructor, we're not limited to those numbers. We can have a class where it's just four or five people, where our yoga class, our Zumba class has been here for so long, but Zumba numbers have gone from three participants weekly to now she has 12 or 15 people per class. And maybe you can get an outreach piece use as part of that funding to do some of the outreach advertisement or whatever for our seniors. I, I just would like to see that money moved over somewhere. If, my, if I have a consensus among my commission. I think it's a good idea. If the van is going to be used though, for senior transport, it won't have to be accessible. Um, being like wheelchair accessible. That is. Yeah, we, Makes it a little more expensive. In years past, when we had to it, we were a very small town. I mean, we used to go on field trips and other things where um, it was good. We used step stools and things in those days, but yes, you definitely would have to. You might also look at, with, with enterprise leasing, they may be able to find stuff that has had a, a may not be brand new, but would be new enough that we'd be able to find something that would work. And we can speak with enterprise about that. I'd like to give you a little perspective on senior programming, since I am one. An example is, I can go to my gym for $21 a month and go every single day. Bob goes for free because he's on Medicare now. You gotta kind of balance well-intentioned, though you are absolutely well-intentioned. You're finding a battle in some cases that folks, we just can't compete with that kind of pricing. You can't make, and I can come to a class every single day it isn't for bucks. It's not necessarily just gym, and what I'm saying, it's not just necessarily exercise programs. It, we had some people that wanted a sewing club. We had other things. Um, yeah, and other just an example. I, I know. I, I, I agree with you on the competition. It's the same reason why our summer programs aren't working here. Exactly. Because there's too much competition in a lot of municipality. But I think there are certain niches we might be able to do to get some of our seniors basically to have a little bit more interaction. Um, because right. I cannot tell you how many people I know that are sitting at home. And I'll go over and knock on the door and spend some time over there. But they're lonely. Uh, they're not getting out. Their health is deteriorating, and I just think we could do better. I, I just think we could. Thank you. Along those lines, since I'm going to be 60 this year, so I'm getting close. Um, you know, maybe maybe it would help to, if we haven't already done so, to do some outreach to the seniors yes. that are here and find out what, what they, they I'm happy want. to help in that and ask them. We would some kind of little focus group. Exactly. Maybe people want a book club. Maybe they want to get together and have pie every month. I don't know. What, right. Whatever it might be. But maybe it would be, you know, if we could reach out to them and ask them what they want since you have some money, it might not cost that much. That's what I'm saying. If we could use it for an outreach yeah. piece to have him build programming, that's whatever that programming is. Like. And it should be based yeah. upon how many people to the, the, you know, these events. This is a service that I think we should be offering the residents. Mm -hmm. If we only get two people participate, then we only get two people participate. Well, again, it's that, that build it 
and you have to give it time. When we do it in house, we can do that. When we're outsourcing it, we can't. They have restrictions. Take the silk speaker said we don't need ten people minimum. They pull the program, and until we can guarantee them ten, they won't send another. And you could have everything from Barry University as much as you can have any series you want, right. whatever that series is going to be, as defined by the interest. And even if you, because I know they do this at FAU, they have huge senior programs at FAU, which is an example where they had all sorts of programming. It was different types of things, and they offered different rotating events, but it was a calendar thing, and people would come. And, and I, I agree with you, it's going to take you some time to build it, but I think it's really worthwhile first. Yeah, I agree. Thank you for, for allowing me to check in. Okay, so we will check into the leasing the van. Um, liability insurance. There's flood insurance and then there's auto insurance, which we're going to leave in there in case we do get the new van. Uh, repairs and maintenance. Uh, the athletic field, we had 20000 in the budget for that last year. We're going to propose 20000 again for that. Um, equipment, 3000 last year, 3000 no increase there. Um, building, we had 15000 budgeted. 2019, we spent 10,000 year to date, um, so we're going to budget 15,000 for that uh, again next year. And then custodial services, 7,000 for this building. That's just broken out, right? I'm sorry. That's just that was one lump sum, and now it's broken out. Is that why it was zero last year? Custodial? Yeah. Well, you just use it. Is that yeah, for the deep clean? No, that's for the deep clean, deep clean. for the bathrooms and yeah. the floor waxing and stripping that we do. Special events, pretty much that's the same as last year, with the exception of the addition of a back to school event. Um, we've added a thousand dollars for that, and so um, we reduced the Winterfest and Springfest budgets by five hundred each to two thousand to comp or to make up for that thousand um, dollars. Concession expense, we just same as last year, five hundred dollars. That just you need to buy drinks or something like that for an event. Because it's a little money for that. Do we, do we ever think of opening up our concession concession saying you know, understand and talk to you about that? In year past, I think that was pulled in years past because of the um, cash flow exchange that the auditors wanted to pull that out of uh, the record. I think that just was something that that was before me, so yeah, so that was just I know we used to have that, but it was all cash system. And for some reason, that just, I don't, I don't know the, the details of, of why that recommendation was made. Um, I know the, the liability of having the, the stove in use in there was an issue. Um, but I don't know all the details of why that was stopped. So that, after that was the thing was So the stove is still being disconnected, right? Yeah. Because we had an incident that. We recall. <laughs> reference to my collection, but it still has not. Do, do we have, um, you have plans for moving some of that vendor's equipment so it's not sitting down there? Yeah, kitchen. We talked about that. I am still trying to entertain. I think I said maybe talk to, I know outside has been considered, but they would need to be caged and put on timers. Um, I one outside. Right. And that's something that we had to talk to the, the owners of the machines about as well. They would have to be changed up the machines to install one to the timers. But in indoors, um, my only concern with moving them out, obviously, is the main place that you would put them would be where the door traffic is, you know, the kids. It is hard enough now to get them to slow down coming in the door. Um, with vending machines of that size in those areas, I just, I worry about that sometimes. Yeah, it's a safety um, So, but locking it and reinstalling the door on that kitchen is something that I've been looking into. To, uh, so we can secure it. If we want to lock that area down, then we can lock that area down. Um, with all the cabinets and everything in there. So the only other thing that I, I was thinking, I noticed with Irma, we didn't, and I discussed this with you as well, we didn't have um, ice. It just didn't come, the county was too big of a storm and they couldn't supply. So um, I was wondering if it would be worthwhile, um, instead of having a vending machine in that location, which is why I asked the question, is if we could have. Um, not so not that it's regularly used, right. but so that it's used primarily for emergency issues. I know we have one uh, for public works, but that's for the public works guys. I'd like to see us have something 
that could help in the case we had any But it's, it's, a, it's a wish list, but it's not a need. I can send you some information. I've researched that after Hurricane Irma. Did the you? Different, you know, the large size industrial ice machines that, it, because ice at Hurricane Irma, it was the difficult. Issue. The only ice I could find from one distributor was a whole tractor trailer right. full, which we didn't need. Another thing, just thinking about that is maybe discussing with Miami Shores Airport Tower about working some type of agreement with them uh, to provide like, ice for residents. Yeah. Um, we definitely need an ice machine because of the events that we had to do. We always have to go to the department. We used to have an ice machine. Yeah. I can look at it. I mean, it just, you can yeah, look at it, it soon. Uh, yeah, I, I, I know you don't want to necessarily health wise have. We already, we're equipped there with, for a drainage because there was an ice machine in there before. Um, but it costs more to repair it than it did to buy a new one. But since we didn't have the concession actively out of that kitchen anymore, we were. Well, and I know I know it's not ideal functionally to have it as an everyday thing for everyone right. going to them because health issues. So I think it I think he's correct in, in having it be a specific one. Right. I can send you some information. I have to hold down. Thank you. Okay. Um, operating supplies again. We're keeping that same as last year, as well as uniforms. Um, can we find you a new computer this year? Yeah? No, we're just talking about that. But we're going to try and get it it's budgeted, so I'll try to get it before this year. It's, okay. it's out here. Then we won't need it for next year, right? So, okay. so we did we did put in a grant, a small grant. I don't know if we're going to get it for fifteen. Was it fifteen hundred dollars to yeah. get computer stations here? Um, my question is, do we have old computers that are? Um, how should I put them? As we retire some of our um, Jurassic Park. XP machines, mm -hmm. they may be at least usable for getting on the internet, and it might be considered. I would say it was ideal, mm -hmm. and there may be some money needed for protective software like that. But it might be worth having one or two here, unless we get the grant, which of course we'll get new ones. But I'm just thinking it may be at least a, a function for some folks. So we looked at that mine because we can get to talk to IT to see if the one that we're moving on from in my office. See if we can make that compatible. And maybe get one more and you'd have at least two. And if we replace a couple of the with child, we can read you know, some of our older ones. So sometimes I think with the ones we're talking about are so dated that the, the programming yeah. we're talking about putting on there is going to be more expensive than just Definitely getting into a, a new computer that has it already installed. So it would be just functional. And that's what we had encountered before with the computers. Exactly. So we got computers donated they, before, but it, it would cost us more to. Make make them compatible with all the programming and what is designed. So, but I definitely would. Yeah, I'm going to try the idea of computers over here. Okay. And then um, membership and dues, keeping the same one sixty. Education and training. We're going to up that a little bit. Um, do we want Issa to attend the which conference? Is that so, um, membership and dues pays for my um, FRPA membership, which is Florida Recreation Parks Association. In the past, we have put in budgeted for me going to that conference, which has been in Orlando. I always go. That's where I get my CEUs to get certified in different aspects of things. Even through um, that, I went and took a crowd management course this year through FRPA, which was in Hollywood, um, that made me crowd management certified, which was very crucial going over shootings and how to address those things, those situations that knock on wood, they never happen, but preparing. So through that, paying for that, got certified for that. But what we're adding in the budget now is for me to stay on site. So in the past, I've done whatever I can just to get to that conference. And so that increases just to stay on site where the conference is. Okay, so um, infrastructure improvements. We budgeted 30,000 for athletic field resodding this year. Um, we've just move that over to 30000 for next year because we're not going to do that this year at this point. Um, not entirely certain we need to restock, quite frankly. And, uh, but we'll keep them on that line item in there for the time being. Um, parking surface, we had talked about doing parking surface and turf block and just doing sections around the park, um, do a little section each year. Uh, we had 20000 for that this year. David's currently pricing that out for the turf block, and then we're going to budget 20000 next year and do another section. Could we move the siding stuff if we're not going to use it and just do more surface parking quicker? Just asking. 
Um, that's a possibility. I have another idea for that. Do you? Okay. Do you got to tell us? That's a surprise. <laughs> 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 Plaguey, we've got 4,000 this year, time. and we're going to budget 4,000 next year for that as well. And then, Commissioner Wise and David and I have been looking at splash pants. And this is something that we're considering um, for the currently the volleyball air area, which is, you know, we know, we all know that's the litter box. <laughs> and so, so um, possibly putting in a splash pad there, and that's something that we could do and make it revenue generate so that it becomes another source of revenue for the village. Um, we could, you know, make it free to residents, kids, and that sort of thing, um, and then charge for people that come in from, you know, other municipalities. Um, there's a number of different options we can do there. Um, we went yesterday to uh, Bay Harbor Island, looked at theirs, was yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. No, it was yesterday. It was yesterday? Yeah. 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 Today's Tuesday. Seems like a week ago, but So these are, this is something we're doing, and we're starting to get pricing on this. Yeah. You know? um, commission Wise brought it as an idea. We're looking into it. Um, we, 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 we think it, 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 it is kind of doable, but we still got to look at the numbers and, you know, the, the water aspect of it, how the cost, the maintenance, but like I said, the manager said, we, 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 we've had some conversation about and some information that she's offered. Um, we, we went to the splash pad that they have with their harbor. It's, 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 it's nice. It, it, it brings a, a good feeling. I, I think it's something that we can just, you know, at least try to explore, see if it's if we can maybe because right now I, I don't get any good feedback on the uh, bottom It's just it's, it's kind of like it's it's dead area. It's wasted. It's wasted real estate. And and you mentioned at the beginning of the meeting how we're now in a place where we can start thinking about those projects that may be expenditures now but will gain us returns. Not even in the long term. This is just in a matter of years, you know, based on the numbers that I've seen and the traffic numbers that ESA has pulled together for us and looking at not only what Miami Shores and similar municipalities are charging for the use of a splash pad, not just for daily rates, but for birthday parties and things like that. Um, we, could, we could look to recoup that investment very quickly and I, I will be applying. Um, there's a window for a grant that's opening in the next couple of weeks that are for community enhancement that may help us to fund some of this, but we should also look at whether or not we want to be encumbered by a grant. What we, we want to be sure that we have the potential to turn this into a revenue stream for the village, because the, the birth of the idea was, how can we create revenue in a village that has no commercial opportunity? Right. And, and this can create one for us, and so we'll proceed with caution and we'll make sure we know what we're doing and what we're getting into, but there are so many great sources we can pull from so that this isn't, we're not going to be taking a big risk. Once we have the numbers in front of us, we will know what we're getting into and exactly when we can expect our return. As part of this, are you looking into liability issues and also into staff training? Absolutely. Absolutely. It would be covered, actually, Issa and I discussed the, the insurance coverage. It'll be covered under the existing policy. Um, and as far as staff training is concerned, you know, that's going to be an incremental cost. And because like any water element, it's crucial to testing and, and proper chemicals and everything else. And the filtration. And you also spoken to parents that are at the top. I strongly recommend it. I actually have. I've spoken to them and I've done some casual surveying of what price points they would be comfortable with. But we also are talking to vendors who have created splash parks far more spectacular than what we're considering, and the different types of water treatment that we would be required and what's suitable for our village. One of the nice things about the volleyball pit is that it's already excavated, so that's going to save us a lot of money, and there's already water source running underneath it. So we're definitely there's looking into water all water source and the type of water you I'm sorry, would use for, uh, for this, because it's water source is a spring flow that's different than water source you would use. There's two types of two types of systems. They have one that has its own underground 
basin that holds the water and that water is recirculated and the problem with those are the constant use of chemicals and such and they have what's more popular are, are a lot of cities do they tie into the actual water main so the water and so city city water in this case it would tie into the you know, I mean it'll be a good careful of water yeah I mean yeah. It, it, it's definitely a, a good item to discuss at one of the commission meetings and well, that's something we'll, we'll dig into. And we just started to explore. Yeah. yeah. Which makes sense, but I think it's a. Just, just, just two, two things that staffing, I just wonder um, what the cost of something like that would be. Because I saw some write up about this in one of the commission meetings, and I think the item didn't get covered at that right, meeting. Pools and I, and it said like, something about volunteers, which I don't think you can count on volunteers. You need like a staff person. And then the other is with. The new shopping center coming in where Kmart used to be, where you've got you know a lot more stores going in there, Michaels and whatever Ross and whatever else. I think the traffic here is going to increase. So those well, of us who live around the park, capacity. and you yeah. live across the street too. I mean, if all of a sudden you've got a bunch of people coming in to use this thing, you know, is right. And how so that's that going to impact about. our quality of life? Yeah. So there's know, there's limited capacity. There's only a certain number. Uh, the, depending on the square foot footage of a pad that you build, that limits the capacity. So there's only a certain number of children who can use it at a time. It's not like this is going to turn into, I think somebody referred to it as Splash Mountain, where there'll just be hordes of kids coming. And while I think it's quite generous to say, let's offer it to our residents for free, I think it's reasonable. Miami Shores charges its residents for usage. I think it's reasonable for residents to pay a certain amount. Five dollars was what the local polling told me people were comfortable with, and slightly more for those outside of the village. But we can also sell annual memberships. I, there's a bracelet system that we're looking into. There are a lot of ways that we will control how many people are using it. But you and can only track control it. once they're here. You can't stop them from coming I'm thinking they can use it only to find I think we're trying to away. solve problems a little further out than is necessary right now. I don't think we should shoot down a great idea that will enhance the park um, and, and perhaps um, create revenue for us. Just let, let's try to be positive. Let's try to do something great for the village and find solutions and not problems. That's my suggestion for this budget. Piece. I'm going to just say, this, rather than this become a splash <coughs> pad issue, mm -hmm. it's 1033. I'm just going to make sure we get through the whole budget here, if I may. And if we can move forward on that. So, okay, that's an exploratory topic. Exactly. It's, there's no budgeting required. Exactly. Is that at this point that I know of? Well, my recommendation would be to move the athletic field resolving down that 30,000 item down to the splash pad just to have that there is a marker for now. Or could you put yeah, splash continuous your splash pad or yeah. other or other uh, a commission agreed upon project. Something language you can work on. So you have flexibility. So you have flexibility. Yeah. 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 I think the label it as splash pad when there's been no No discussion of it that's right. right. I yeah. think it should just be contingency right now. Yeah. I don't think it needs yeah. to be labeled as splash pad. Perfect. That's fine. Contingency is good. Okay. All right. So and that's it. Before you say that's it, I want one more thing if I may. Because um, it's you always have I, one I, I have a <laughs> It's one of my don't even start. Um, we didn't talk about one project that I I I've hinted at several times. And that is we have um, I know we're moving to digitization uh, digitization of rec records. But based upon our um, Iron Mountain and uh, the way we currently keep our records, I'm gonna leave it generic like that. It is not adequate the way we store our records currently. I think we need to look at some other possibilities. I will bring an item forward on that um, to the commission to discuss outside of here, but I do think we need to look at proper record storage for both our police department and our main folks, and I think there are ways, and you and I have discussed several ways in which to approach that. I, until we can get to a system where we're not having them a little bit here and a little bit there, a little bit, I, I think we need a more um, mature and professional way in which we do that. I think that or get we, my characterization correct. Well, no, I think when we do the digitization, there are a lot of records that at that point can be destroyed. Um, the ones that do have to be kept forever, I think that we have enough space in these two rooms of the rec center to maintain those. And so, at least for the time being, but we'll, we'll see as we move forward. Yeah, because I, I, I just think we need a, a more with fire suppression system and, and, the, and the correct way to do it. That's right. just my thought. That's all. Anybody else? Thank you, everybody, for staying. Uh, real, real quick, next quick question. When will, I know there was
was some concern about the. Now that we got to this stage, when will a draft of this be up on the website? So here, here's the, the next phase. Uh, today, Wednesday, I hope that we thank you for, for understanding the process and participating. Uh, I can crunch this into a draft pretty quick. But the key that I want for you is June financial. What, this is based on May 31st. I need to get June 30th into here. Uh, that's going to take another week. So by a week before your next hearing, that should be out. I could put it out tomorrow, but it's, it's really not as valuable as having the June financials approached in here. Uh, and that'll give you a real reserve transfer amount mm -hmm. projection, a, a more real, I should say. And right now, this one had about 40000 of unbalanced, un, unassigned funds. So that didn't change a whole lot today. Uh, so what will happen is that reserve concept will start to be your challenge to say, okay, this is what's in the budget, this is what it creates in reserves, what do we want to live with? And, and there was and a mention by Mr. Ross, he is correct, uh, uh, the next uh, two meetings was accidentally put at 7.30, so if you would be so kind as to correct that to a regular 7 o'clock meeting. Oh, that was a good pickup on us. No, it's a typo. Yeah. No, I think what they were saying was, no, I went to the meetings. They're actually scheduled for 7.30. This yeah. budget hearing you've got at 7. So you're going to yeah, have to. Yeah, the budget hearing. That was, that was seven seven yeah. Four, yeah. supposed to be. Oh, so you have 7 and then 7.30? Yeah. All right. Then it's okay. just a half hour. I don't agree. What's the comment? Okay. I, okay. I, so right. I don't think that's a. So the hearings are 7 7. I got you. Okay. Yeah. So you I'm sorry. But I understand as, that. As the question My point was that if you guys want to do that, you should decide that you can't go to the workshop. But. Yeah. Yes. Unfortunately, it's done in, in, in uh, August, so there's no time to do that. So we just have to have a consensus and then um, the way it's the way it's set. But I don't know. So the second workshop is only budget workshop, but it's the first reading that is at seven o'clock. It's seven to seven thirty is the first reading, and then and you separate out the public hearings and, um, exactly. from the actual meetings. But the way it's scheduled now is to put it in front of the meeting, which we didn't. He's Question. correct. We did not agree to that. Couldn't you put that at 6.30 instead of That's what we've done in the past, actually. Yeah, that, that's that's actually, 6.30 is that's much better. Yeah. We, we, don't, we haven't got past We haven't. Uh, Let me look it up. Well, yeah, I looked what, it up last year. I think, I think the, 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 the topic I'm hearing is that you want more time for the budget and you don't want to punch out your agenda also. Also, for, for the last two commission meetings, we haven't gone to a complete agenda. We're going to go to a complete agenda. I think we should leave it the way we've always done it. So, because there's a consensus among the group. Yeah, why change it? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for all your work. Thank you for everyone. Well, thank you. The first hearing was 7 o'clock. Thank you. Yeah. And now we just have to make a motion yeah. to adjourn to be fair. Usually you have to say this late.